This my recording is on. All right. So today's May twenty first, twenty twenty one, and we're continuing our discussion on the Desiderata extinction nadi, and we're joined once again by Kevin. So, um, anyone want to start it off, or did you want to continue what you were saying, Kevin? Um, oh, wait, wait, can I just start? Oh, sure. I, 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 Sophie it. asked the question and Kevin started ask, answering it, but I thought we should record it. But uh, let me let me answer you. Yes. First of all, is just congratulations on what you've done with Drastic and managed to make a breakthrough. And so that now that this issue of a manufactured virus is actually in the Overton window, and that's a, a real breakthrough. So I've got some follow on questions from that. But do, do you just want to continue? with, with uh, just saying, you know, about that breakthrough? Uh, well, you know, there's, there were many, many people uh, involved. Uh, it's a, you know, Drastic is quite a large group. Um, it is, uh, how would you say? Well, the, the acronym is for uh, Distributed Radical <laughs> Automat, uh, I can't remember. It's too complex for me. I've just woke up. But the, uh, the it's a lot of people bringing lots of different bits of expertise to to the problem, and that problem was that from the very beginning, uh, what was happening around uh, Wuhan, what was happening uh, with respect to the global response, d looked wrong, and the. Those those who have been entrusted, because well, you know, once you're given that PhD and that doctorate and the position in, in the academy to as being the, the world experts, people look to you, and uh, it was very very obvious, even after a little bit of digging, that there was huge conflicts of interest with the people involved, uh, the people that. Uh, try to convince the world and, and this is not this is this is an exaggeration they try to convince the world through multiple uh tactics uh that included uh colluding uh with uh individuals that are well respected to have a uh, letter published in the lancet to literally play uh well, the, their wording was that if if you were of the opinion that you were looking at something beyond the natural explanation, which they would put forward, they used the words that you were a conspiracy theorist, right? Literally to to constrain the the discussion, and this is this was a very very blatant use of the. Uh, well, it, it was a nefarious use of the media. It was a nefarious use of the scientific establishment. It was, uh, it it encompassed a whole network of individuals from politicians to deep state uh, operatives, and in that I'm specifically alluding to uh fauci and uh the the department that he runs i mean he's the highest paid civil servant in the united states uh ha has been there for 40 years in that one position uh, a lot ties around anthony fauci um whether we'll get to him or not i i, I don't know um you know it was interesting i don't know if you saw this week that Rand paul uh, the senator had um, cornered the, or not cornered him, but you know, began to press him uh, in a congressional meeting, and tried to play sophistry with the term of gain of function. Um, you know, it was uh, he was treading very carefully uh, along the uh, up against the line and tiptoeing across the cracks of. Uh, meaning and uh, it, it, well 
you've you we've you couldn't ask for a better response because at the same time as well we had this letter that was published by uh Nunes and that was directed towards the president so the Republican party are taking on something of an oppositional role do i see something happening with Fauci he's too old i think he's too high up that he's he would just walk away before there's anything really done with respect to uh, holding people to account but and this has been a contention that i've made from the very 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 beginning that that lower down level the layers down below which were the operational levels where we can see uh, names put on papers etc especially on the us side especially those relating to eco health those are uh, th th they would like the the system will kick those away and and hope that we you know and th that will be the sacrificial lamb or the <laughs> you know the the body that they'll tip over the side for what you know as they perceive us to be sharks and hope that that uh, will will uh, keep us quiet but the picture is being complicated further oh, let's, let's say complicated it's been amplified by the the letter published in the journal science okay so that's look in in my field right if you th there are free target journals that you want to get into nature um the lancet science if you manage uh, a paper in there then usually your career is set you can go uh, where and do what you want uh, i never quite attained that i was just at the level uh, below um but the uh, after a year of pressure done by uh, the drastic group, um, and there's there's and, you know there's individuals around it uh, have all sort of aggregated together, all bought uh, bits to the public eye, and um, they suddenly these people have developed the spine and now want to come forward and say, well, we need to have a full investigation or another investigation because there were such obvious uh, conflicts of interest uh, in previous ex investigations. So there was the whole farce of Peter Dayzak from EcoHealth being uh, involved in both the uh, World Health Organization's uh, official investigation where they went to, so they went to Wuhan and spoke to uh the laboratory for two hours you know something ridiculous like that we and we know that there were uh that there was a whole raft of questions and um series of investigations that should have took place at that point and haven't and um and my you know i've said as this letter has come out it's it's great that it's picked up right that the effort that everyone has gone to 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 raise the public's awareness of uh, this very very sordid it's it's a sordid state of affairs and has dragged science through the mud the problem is is that these bigger groups now will come in and try to sort of uh sweep up the 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 glory of of fixing this problem and at the same time, I'm concerned that uh, it's being done to try to to silence. It's a, it's a strategic move to try to silence critics. And the question then is why? Why why would they do that? Well, the the issue is is that there's so much involvement from the apparatus within the U.S. side. This is not just a Chinese phenomenon money came from the us and like i say channeled through you know but essentially eco health alliance was a front for the um department of defense and a way to circumvent uh bio warfare legislation that was meant to stop research into these types of agents and in under the guise of ecology they've uh, they've managed to get around it and the you know the, the vanity of science scientists 
has just left a paper trail that we can follow. It's not uh, it's not like they've done it in secret. They've publicized everything that they do because it means even more money and more uh, fame for them because they they'll be they'll build a reputation within uh, the networks and and groups and um because of that i've i've streamed multiple times now that yes great i'm i'm happy that they're they're going to step forward um i'm happy that uh bigger news organizations are following it but um just i i've got a jaded eye with respect to what's coming and i'm i'm certain that it's just a well we'll we'll not see what we what we really want it's just a it's just a way to you know they've had to they've had to give ground this is their way of giving ground and and you know we'll we'll meet the resistance of the of the system as we try to sort of push further yeah so i i see it the same way it's basically they really they're not going to Air too much of their dirty laundry. The scientific industrial family, um, you know, has basically a little breach. But I can definitely see that Peter Dezak and EcoHealth will be the fall guy, and then they will all consolidate. But I saw you mention in one of your streams that something which I thought was definitely um, the Rand Paul angle and some some other Congress people on the right is that. I think their agenda, and everybody's going to make hay out of this, I'm sure, um, you know, because it's all politics for them. Politics never stops or starts. It's just continuous. And so they would they would use this as a causus ballast to at least escalate the, the tensions in the Cold War II or at least tensions with China. So they're going to use it as a stick to beat China. And the political aim is they don't really give a crap's ass about origins of SARS-CoV-2. We're more interested in making hay out of it and political, uh, using it for political leverage to, to get a war going. Um, and so I want you to talk to that. And then the, um, the other thing is just to jump to my next question quickly, here, which might be related. The other thing you said was something which I also thought was about to happen, and that's that what we can expect next is for the CCP to make a miraculous little discovery of uh, salted, you know, uh, origin of SARS-CoV-2 and potentially a, a, a bat cave in Thailand or something like that. That's, but, you know, and then they'll call that a proximal origin and it would be, it would be really suspicious. Oh, they've, they've tried to do that already. So in... Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Yeah, so they uh, published in uh, the end of 2020. Uh, it was a study and, you know, basically they frame shifted a bunch of amino acids from a bat uh, sample that they had from, I want to say Thailand and said, haha, look, we can, you know, the signature which everyone is looking at, which is the uh, furing cleavage site as uh, one of the signatures for this um uh, for SARS-CoV-2 as being uh, some, perhaps manipulated, uh, they they try to you know say that oh look there's something here that that's similar it must be we can see something in the wild but um, it's it's a very very poor attempt and the you know the real the real experts uh, that that sort of driving this and you know shout out needs to go to uh, his name's Zhao Zhang uh, Rosanna Sagrato um they're, they're all they're all um they're all doing the the really technical stuff of um picking apart that information it's a, it's amazing what a small uh, it's not sm not small but uh uh focused group of people can achieve when dealing with what is obvious sort of state propaganda and them uh, not only state but the science corporate uh domain with respect to trying to cover their backsides and you know in the molecular biology is it, it's a tough one for the powers that be to use to try to hoodwink people because there's, you know, there are people with the scientific training that can just look at it and say, well, okay, you know, we'll we'll 
pick that apart and that's been done literally like i say for for 15 months now in the in drastic has holds a central part to that and um so if they if they do pull something out that's uh you know, you know they claim to find a a sample in a fridge in a freezer somewhere just you know just happens to be there then um i think there uh, that there's so much evidence that's been built up because of their initial refusal to um be clean with respect to uh, the, the data that was coming out and a critical factor was uh the so there are two main narratives with uh lab leak hypotheses there's let's call them the drastic hypothesis and then there's the li men yang and uh the well she's part of the steve bannon news group and uh, they have a different proposal for where SARS came from that it was uh it's a, a hybrid of as uh, zx45 zc41 uh, strain is it something i never remember the designation for it. but anyway a, a backbone that the chinese army have developed so no one would no one would know that backbone and they deliberately released it and um the problem is is just there's a you know that's a very salacious way of bringing the problem or the attention to the west um and we can get into you know that she has conflicts of interest uh, especially the group that she's she's associated with and then there's the drastic one which looks at the fact looks at the fact that their investigations found out that um she uh Zheng Li Shi was uh had had received samples from a mine in Yunnan where six miners had become uh ill with SARS like condition free died and um it was sort of kept hushed hushed and the drastic group uh like I said all I know sometimes is just uh user names on drastic that's how uh, anonymous some of them are because they're afraid of chinese um of what the chinese might do um they first find a uh a master's thesis talking about these miners and it, it, it's you know that's the first sort of official indication that we're looking at oh now we can see something in the science because we can compare with the published science that they've done which is an institute they've pushed out and basically um they they've been working with this virus they've they've giving it another designation from uh, that cave it was called back of uh 4941 i think the the number they even published it and then after and like i said i can't this this is why it's so difficult not to point a finger at the chinese because if they if if it had been salted there right um you you would expect them to come clean as as quickly as possible with respect to the agents they've been working on but instead we've had this very uh, convoluted uh response from the chinese that included uh changing uh the running of the in, uh, the institute it came under uh, over military control uh samples were destroyed um and there was a wall of silence that was met after the initial flurry of publications which came out which tried to argue that there was this bat origin virus and it had to be a spillover which was aided by the west these organizations and uh, the, uh in conjunction with the ccp and the wuhan institute of virology um like i said there's the the, the drastic group doing what they would doing and like i say these people uh, you know very careful about uh who their identities are but they're managing to find these nuggets and the first one was this master's thesis which said hey there was actually something going on and they they'd been working on this agent for um since 2012 2013 but at the uh, as it was coming out in 2020 so 
uh, the the lab there, and Zheng Li Shi had a Nature paper pointing to this. Uh, they called it RATG13. So this is uh, we have this sample in our fridge. We think this matches, etc. But we don't have any more that we can run sequences on, etc. But here's the sequence we've got, and that's what people ran with. But uh, there's a lot of overlap with this uh, uh, progenitor strain uh, that the back of 49, 41. And um, that was, you know, that was a sort of point of contention of going backwards and forwards between the, you know, all the discussion groups. And then literally, uh, as you know, it was a sort of, well, was it was the timing too too good? I don't know. But the, the but what happened was we had the letter from science from all these uh, the the people in that carry weight in the community, including Ralph Barrack, who signed that letter, and um, him signing that letter. Uh, well, we, we'll get into the, the details of uh, what I what I think is the problem there, but. Um, Anyway, but that letter from science hits the hits the public sphere. The press pick it up, and at the same time, uh, the individual. The, and if people are watching this, his name is the Seeker two six eight on Twitter. That's all I know. Okay, um, finds three more theses from that institute and the Chinese Academy of Science, including a PhD thesis, which is in you know. When you're doing your PhD, it's a, usually a considerable, considerable document and a lot of data that just often doesn't get published per se, but builds a builds a picture that is the uh, the foundation on which you publish multiple papers. And in there, what we see is um, black and white proof of. Yes, they've been working on the samples from the miners. Zheng Li Shi has been caught in a lie because they, they said that they uh, weren't doing anything with these samples. And we find out that there's uh, dozens of um, serum samples that have been taken. And in in that year where people off the strength of the, uh, the first uh, paper with respect to the mine, um, they published a... a a paper, Mona, and I, I can never, they're Indian names, so it's very difficult for me to pronounce. And um, they got, got a correction made or a, an addendum made in the Nature paper. And this is, these are, if you have this happen in scientific research, addendums made, people start investigating and looking at the veracity of papers and these groups. These are, it's a big deal. And, um, in the in the addendums that they made, they've they're caught lying be, through the data that we see has been done on uh, this from this PhD thesis, and we find that they do they found a whole bunch of uh, coronaviruses in that cave. They were working on them. So that specifically working on them, doing these manipulations, trying to see if they were infective. And this just arrived right at the same time and, you know, sort of pierced the veil of, uh, right, so it was an edifice of nonsense built, built by institutions and organizations that were in a cover your ass mode. And, it, well, so, now here we are. So, so just going back to the Steve Pannon version and the, the other she, the, the, the other she was, she's the whistleblower one, right? That came yes, up with yes. China. Yeah. And so what I don't find credible about all that is if it's a deliberate release, it seems a bit suspect that they would release it so close to the Wuhan lab. <laughs> it's like, that's, uh, it doesn't sound like a good target if, um, to begin with. But the, what, what do you think about that and the, um, the other thing is uh, they haven't released the records for patient zero to patient 40. No. I, I think they still haven't, which is kind of really suspicious behavior because you'd think the very first thing you'd do uh, in a global pandemic is make sure that that was released to the world. Mm. I mean, at least in uh, an anonymized form, right? Don't, don't, is, is it like a really, you know, guilty smoking gun to not release those records? Yes. Yes. And my... 
look, um, there are there are some arguments that Li Men Yang has put forward that I pay attention to, but um, her contention and her objection to the source origin being the Yunnan mine was that there wasn't the uh, serum samples taken. And uh, that was, in her mind, proof that her her theory was the more, more accurate one with respect to what was going on with SARS-CoV-2. And but what we find is, is we find all this, all these documents, these accepted documents that, uh, that Zheng Li Shi was a uh, supervisor on. That was part of the Chinese Academy of Sciences. Their official documents, and that expands massively the uh, the, the the scope of data that we know was available that directly contradicts what it is that she's saying. Now, you know, I'm, I know people that have uh, interviewed with her. I'd, I'd be happy to speak with her um, about this issue. Uh, but the, uh, I, feel, I feel that the drastic argument is far, far closer to reality than the version that uh, Li Men Yang is saying. Now, okay, it, so, so you have to ask then, well, how did she come up with the story or, or, or not the story but the theory that she she was bringing forward and then you have to look at the organization that she's been associated with with respect to um bringing that information to the public and that was through guao miles guao media and you know this it's a big it's a big group and have um, how would you say they're they're, they're very antagonistic <laughs> towards the yeah. Chinese. Yeah, but uh, she's an asylum seeker too, isn't she? Which makes her mm. testimony a little bit credulous, right? Uh, I, like I say, I don't I don't want to be. I would like to speak to her first, and I think there's more evidence to come out and i would like her to explain in her own words why what she says contradicts the uh, the actual evidence which is documents and you, you know you have to take those things seriously if they've been accepted and filed as uh, theses for institutions that's the whole point of doing it that you know, if you really wanted to, if someone really wanted to, they could dig into my past and they'll find my uh, PhD thesis for <laughs> if they if they wanted to uh, bore themselves to death. But the um, it, we've got to we've got to tread very very carefully now. And so there's one thing there's one issue that I would take from Li Men Yang which I think has been brought onto the table that um, has to be addressed right now. And it's her statements that uh, SARS-CoV-2 is, she calls it an unrestricted bioweapon. And um, I would say this, in review, in game theorying out every aspect of what it would mean that they were doing this research in a laboratory that you have to have everything on the table of what what were the reasons that they were doing this research and, and why and if it's dual use you have to include the extreme end of the of, of that spectrum because it's just that's there now that's what's being presented and in the context of the lies and um, disinformation that's been put forward, not only by the Chinese, but from the experts on uh, our side. Um, we, we need, uh, we need, we need to exclude it, right? And to exclude it, we have to talk about it. So we have to still 
uh, talk with Li Man Yang, find out what, find out exactly all the evidence that she's bringing, put it onto the table with respect to the evidence that we do have, and say, okay, where where does it fit along this spectrum? I personally believe that um, what we're looking at was an attempt at vaccines. They're going out. They're making that. They're, they're, and this is the, this is the perverse scenario that we find ourselves in, which is that we are um, we're looking at the, the the results of a program that officially was designed to predict. That's what it was called. The program was called Predict the emergence of uh, of pandemics through the, the type of methodology they were using, which was go out into the wild, sample it, bring it back to the laboratory, look at the viruses that they find. And the idea being that you'll find some that are through mutation close to jumping into humans. Okay, and by that, then they can, you know, the idea being that they can say, okay, it's in that region, we have to pay attention. and. But, build. Yeah, but, but this is all the civilian research, right? So, it, okay, so let's ex examine another scenario. So it's dual use and there's a parallel military program going on in the background. So you have, say, all the stuff, you know, by the NIAID and, and EcoHealth and stuff, all that collaborative research is then kind of public. Then you have a, a secret parallel military project, and then it has secret backbones and stuff that isn't published. Uh, all the the uh, that kind of parallel research. Then what what happens? I mean, uh, my assumption is that they're not really doing gain of function research. They will say, well, it's to predict what might come out of the wild. But I mean, I think really the hidden subtext is it's military search and it's it's to see what uh, some other military lab will come up with so that they can actually, you know, basically do a countermeasure. So it's really bioweapons countermeasure research rather than it is being defensive against the wild. Yes. So then how how long, I mean, that, what that implies is that when they develop these bioweapons, then they, in parallel developing the defenses and the vaccines, how, does that lag? How long does that lag? And, and do you think there's any evidence, say, maybe from the Chinese vaccine that there was some pre-development on it that superseded the outbreak, which would imply that they, you know, from the vaccine, it's kind of a secondary indicator that they have knowledge of SARS-CoV-2. Yeah, so I think there's an important uh, manuscript, which was has Zheng Li Shi's name on it, which was them testing uh, an inactivated vaccine that it basically is the sounds like Sinovac from its description in the scientific literature, which they were testing on monkeys. And you know, this is I would encourage everyone you have to you have to follow uh, Billy Bostickson, uh, his ResearchGate profile. He's got a, uh, uh, a series of documents free which outline uh, the the mechanisms uh, or, or the mechanism of forensic research that should be uh, utilized against the Wuhan Institute and the, the science infrastructure around Wuhan, because there are many other institutes that, are in, that were involved. Uh, it's, it wasn't just Wuhan Institute of Virology by itself. There's multiple other centers, uh, but particularly the animal facilities. And um, we know that um, 1,300 monkeys around that facility have been funneled through pro programs and program. You know, not all Zheng Li Shi's lab. Obviously, 1,300 monkeys is an enormous amount of uh, uh, animal data. But as a as an institute and, like I say, the 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 infrastructure there, it means that there was a massive program massive beyond beyond perhaps what we would be considering the um well, well it's kind of like we see the how tip know, of the iceberg how, how do we know about those 1300 monkeys what, what's the intelligence there is it uh, how did you get that uh, so again um billy bostickson uh, okay yeah 
Thank you. And go to his research gate profile. Thanks. And uh, okay. he, he has, you know, he's been working with law enforcement groups. He's working, he's got contacts, etc. And this information has been leaked, given. Um, but there are people within China who obviously understand the gravity of what's going on. And, you know, he's he's found the um he's found the uh, the it's not smoking gun it's the it's it would be like the finding the bureaucracy of the uh the germans for their you know treatment of the for the work camps right there was a whole you know, a whole bureaucracy behind that that just sort of processed the information, you know, famously by IBM, right? As they as they were just processing all this stuff. On well, horror of cards, yeah. Yeah, and uh, the, the simple fact is there's the same, there's the equivalent around the Wuhan, uh, the Wuhan complex. And it's, it's multi-level and multi-disciplinary and it's just left it's, it's obviously just left a bureaucratic fingerprint that's uh, available for um that's available for the those that are motivated and to reach out for the contacts uh contacts to dig into if they if they would like and this is a Well, it's open source intelligence at the end of the day, but you know we've come to realize that even even the big organizations, the CIA, the NSA, you know what they work on? Open source intelligence. The news, the news yeah. crews that get into areas, the there's they don't have uh, spies like we imagined from the Cold War, yeah. dropping little little. Um, Bits of my, microfilm. My my mom worked in intelligence in in South Africa because um, she was a language translator, so she understood Portuguese and Spanish. Could uh, you know do all the Cuban stuff? But the the vast majority of the stuff they worked with, I'm talking about like ninety five percent was was fully open commercial journals and stuff like that. You basically you can piece together almost everything from mm. from published information. But yeah. so sketch sketch uh, the basic infrastructure of if if this is a parallel military program, uh, then how how does it look in terms of how it's organised? Because in South Africa, what they did this kind of uh, research on an ethnic bioweapon, and it's all been exposed now with Vodabasan and things like that. But how that was done is they used the public arena and kind of open white box research, which I kind of imagine is the Wuhan lab. Um, and then they uh, off sites, uh, things like the Rudaport or the Rudaport lab, where they do the really evil stuff. Mm. And so there's a kind of cross pollination between that. So I imagine the kind of monkey research, if you have 1300 monkeys, they're in a very hardened facility that's very secret. And they just transfer knowledge uh, from the kind of innocent parallel, you know, gain of function research that's going on in a place like Wuhan. Um, but then, isn't there? Is that how it is? And if, and if so, isn't there a big fingerprint? I mean, there must be a lot of traffic. Uh, certainly, the NSA and CIA and stuff—they must know exactly what happened because of all the chatter that must have gone on. Um, uh, yes, there, there is. And again, I'm going to I'm going to try and just pull it up and see if I can I can just send you links because rather than because Billy Bostickson um, is a is a he's the tip of the spear with respect to being able to um, get this information out. And I don't know, I don't know how he does it. Uh, you know, I've spoken to him behind, he's one of the few people who I've really had uh, dialogue with. And some, somehow he man he's awake all hours of the day. He's, um, and he's pulling out advanced information and not only, not only just posting it 
publicly, he's building this uh, this very comprehensive set of uh, uh, documents, which are public now. And you can he's, look at. He's building a hit on himself by the sounds of it. Uh, he's taking a huge risk, um, and you know, I, you could say I am because I'm one of the awesome. public faces of uh, this this approach that's been taken, which is you know, I I call it sort of jihad science, where we've um we've put up a resistance yeah. against put up those the, the, those links it would be it would be really nice yeah i'm just, I'm just... the idea of doing a movie called uh, 1300 monkeys instead of 12 monkeys <laughs> <laughs> yes uh... it's looking very right, 12 yes. monkeys. <laughs> i must tell you a story about that later uh let me let me just try and i'm just trying to pull them up now uh Research Kate, but of course, you know, it just gives me my. But it, so, so then, uh, the thing about all these, you know, when when you get a little rat's nest like this, and you can see this little these vipers, it's kind of like the Epstein thing. Once once you get a little glimpse of the rot, you know the rot extends. It's not just like one bad apple. <laughs> you know, you know that it exposes this huge. Uh, nest of vipers that's you know basically below the waterline. Um, so, can you give an insight into you know uh, how how it looks on the Chinese side where they must be doing bioweapons research and how it looks on on the the say the American and Israeli side where the you know what is it Fort Dietrichson or whatever that is Fort Dietrich yeah. Fort Dietrich. Um, um, and and the, the UK side because they they all got their fingers in it. So so am I right? Because what my understanding is, they have all this neutral white box civilian research where they all kind of collaborate. Then they all take it off site and do the dirty deeds in Portland Down and shit where where it gets really evil. Uh, so, can you sketch that out? Well, the 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 Chinese one is it's so huge. That and you know, for me, the 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 names are impenetrable. <laughs> it's just ping and bong and gang and um, and so it's difficult to sort of put uh, faces to to names apart from the sort of real major characters. But the problem is, is that there's layers and layers, well, not layers, but nodes. I would say within within the Chinese uh, um, system that extend across multiple institutions. And the, well, you know, well, it's, it's very difficult to point at the Chinese and them not turn around and say, "Well, look, you've you've got the same, right?" Um, Dietrich is a BSL four system uh, lab that that's literally been shut down for leaks, etc. And um, anything, anything, and this is this is the whole problem with this uh, research paradigm is that. Um, everyone has dirty fingerprints on it and so this is this is the interesting dynamic that we're walking into right now is well how how is this gonna uh unfurl in on the political side as you know it's already in congress we had rampal uh we have uh devin nunez with his official letter uh straight to the president saying what's going on and um at the at, at, at the same time i feel that's that that's the u.s side trying to hide what it is that it's done by going on the offensive against the chinese um so yes we can we can name names on every side and institutes and we can say they were all involved in uh you know a uh highly complex uh, multi, uh, multi-faceted program that yes is uh, it can be probed by the public because of the mechanisms that are there, but obviously, be, you know, because of its nature, that there, there there becomes this murky end of it. That uh, you know, I'm of the opinion now that because, like I said earlier, because it was, um, it's they were not forthcoming and they were obviously deceptive to begin with that we have to assume the worst right now 
and I would say that the default position for the uh, for the diplomatic services and the cables that need to that are going to run between countries and embassies as they talk to each other is that it's now in, it's incumbent upon the Chinese to prove or, or, or we just assumed that they were the weapons program was involved and we assumed that the, the vaccine program was part of that um project right they have to they need to say well yeah okay this is what happened and it's likely uh, it got out and the and so here's here's an interesting little caveat to the to the to the way the the winds have changed with uh, the the current narrative so um there was back in the february of 2020 uh, we had the obvious you know coercion of the scientific process by this letter in the lancet and these signatories saying if you think that it didn't come from nature it's you're a conspiracy theorist and then there was this uh there was a paper published called the proximal origins of SARS-CoV-2 which says well um it doesn't use it doesn't have anything that we look at as uh the signatures of genetic manipulation and a couple of lame arguments as to why uh it's uh, it wouldn't be man made and you know there it wasn't perfect uh, enough yeah yeah but, but basically and um <laughs> you know i'm uh, and, and there, there were other there were other uh reasons as well i, I have the link i'm just i'm just going to yeah no I've, you... I've read it all it's it's pathetic I, I from the from the moment it was released i, I was laughing it was pathetic but yeah, I'm just, um, i want to send you uh let's put it in uh Sophie's Discord but um yeah, that, I, I just got the the profile for Billy uh, Bostickson. Um, yeah so um like I say you can spend a week reading through that um to look at the scope of the, the, oh, the, the there's a it's not you know there wasn't one project it's a whole it's a whole uh set of facilities with multiple principal investigators all working and under obvious direction from uh or, or in direct collaboration with the uh, chinese military okay but we have the same we have the same sort of programs but th the leak happened there okay so in that respect the they they have to take for the moment the the bigger part of the blame um but i i would i'm of the opinion that right now because we've managed to push back right to, to uh stop the narrative which was going to be pushed and let's say we've spoke about this before they had a program ready to go which was it was going to be tied in with the uh, environmental argument it was going to be um you know the blame was not going to be on the scientists the blame and the programs the blame was going to be put uh on to uh humans in general en encroachment in nature and all the stuff mm. that peter dezak goes on about yeah and uh that when you look at it is the core of the un uh 2020 2030 uh 2021 2030 programs that are about uh, organizing uh, human beings on a global scale into a uh, well the, the the next iteration of the technological society it's not it's not a new thing we're already in it but yeah but it's not it's yeah. not a new thing that uh, that the absurdity of having humans in enormous cities living on top of each other depending on uh, on an industrial agriculture was going to breed a pandemic that goes back to the middle ages we don't and to enter other and before that we know well that every civilization that ends up building those ba babylon kind of uh, cities are going to end up with with the plague uh, or the four or, horsemen basically yeah uh, that is like that is you know at the back of it like we we i know we're going to we're talking about military we talk about bioweapons we're talking about the common sense is there too like we, we have to question civilization there too you can't yeah, put it out of the equation 
Do you know? Yeah, because this, this is the first time humans have ever seen nature. You know, we've all been living in cities since the creation. And now we're moving out into nature. Humans have never known nature before. We've never been in nature. And now we're starting to. So now we need eco-health because we're going to start interacting with animals for the very first time in human existence. It's yeah, it's, it's a nonsense. It's a nonsense argument, right? And the... Um, like I say, as a pre, completely as a pre inverted, completely inverted, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, and like I say, we're in the upside down, um, and you know, it's, it's it's a miracle that we've we're in the position right now where we've been able to, like I say, just push back that they've had to in real time begin to um, modify their own strategy. And in, in modifying their own strategy, I'm of the opinion that we can begin to continue to hold their feet to the fire. And so th there's a key player in, in this whole uh, story, which is Ralph Barrack. Uh, he's the progenitor lab through which much of the technology around SARS as an agent to be manipulated was developed. He, uh, Zheng Li Shi, is a protege from him and he's on the letter uh, signed by uh, this this 18 scientists but they you know they're prestigious scientists but the other people were prestigious scientists too who were arguing that it wasn't the uh, you, you're a conspiracy theorist for thinking that it's not uh, it's not a natural uh, phenomenon and um, you know, I've got, I've got a couple, yeah. couple of coffees on my uh, desk, and some <laughs> are old. I'm one. not sure which one is the fresh <laughs> the one. one without <laughs> so, uh, Yeah, this one so looks okay. I, I don't uh, get, have much hope that basically there will be any repercussions like uh, ending gain of function research or anything like that, because uh, you know, the, I see that there's the two parallel societies in science and one of them is the civilian one where they have these kind of naive debates on should we be doing gain of function research and on the other side of the fence these guys are like dudes do you know that there there is this is a matter of national security and we have an all-out um you know basically escalation in bio warfare and <laughs> too right we're going to be doing gain of function research because the other guys are oh, you stupid idiots i saw all this um unfold uh, it's kind of like deja vu back to the late 80s when there was this debate. Um, if if you you'll have to correct me on the details here, but it was the it was the end of measles or polio or something. And they had like six vials left, frozen vials of the last of this scourge of humanity that was kept in a fridge. And there was a raging debate all amongst these civilian scientists who were like, should we destroy it? And then say people that it said, no, we should keep it. That was smallpox. Smallpox, smallpox, that's it. And so the, there was this ding dong debate that went back and forwards about what should we do with these six files. And one side said, no, there's a chance of a leak. And one side said, we might need them to genetically engineer something. And bloody blahs, raging debate that went on. The debate suddenly ended and got settled in around 91 when the wall came down and uh, all what that was going on behind the Soviet Union uh, all came out. And it turned out that everybody you know, the US, Russia, everybody had like swimming pools of the shit. There wasn't six files. These guys had Olympic swimming pools <laughs> full of smallpox and bioweapons. Yeah, so especially, the, especially the Russians. Out and everybody just carried on. Yeah, especially the Russians. And, you know, the, 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 the research that, you know, the, the, group, the groups that I'm involved with, it's not my groups. It's I'm like fortunate enough to be associated with a bunch of uh, very smart people and I seem to be somewhat of a, a spokesman for them but um, it's very it's very obvious when you track back the histories of the people involved particularly on, on the Chinese side it's ambiguous to us because it's such a difficult uh, it's such a difficult um, network to penetrate especially on the Chinese side it, uh, Chinese academics working in the West are easier to track and we've done a better job of uh, pointing them out and we know the uh, institutes which um, we're working uh, collaborating with the Wuhan Institute of Virology so we've got we've got a good idea there but like you say there's the the, the defense aspect of it and in the um, 
in our sort of research and as we've seen players being moved into uh, different positions on the chessboard to speak for the uh, the public uh, uh, to the public and this is coming from the think tank so this brings us to the uh, Jamie Metzl and Andrew Weber uh, narrative right because so as as we've brought the lab leak narrative hypothesis forward other people are trying to pick it up so if so in between us and the science letter there's uh the think tank groups led by metzel and weber and th these people um are deeply tied to the political system in the us um weber had been part of the um at Weber Metzl had been part of uh, Clinton's coterie in the early 90s and um, has moved in those circles to these supranational groups and now he's part of the Atlantic Council while at the same time you've got Andrew Weber who was the secretary or the vice secretary of, of defense but basically played a huge role in that uh, era that you were talking about as the Soviet Union came down about trying to um, get together all the uh, all the weapons that they uh, they thought were going to sort of spill out the collapse of the Soviet Union and um, my friend uh, Mark Kulak at Housatonic describes him as a sort of uh, Indiana Jones going round these missions and personally retrieving, you know, nuclear capable fighter jets to uh, caches of enriched uranium to bio weapons. And I've put forward the contention when listening, when first coming across Andrew Weber, and I just, someone would have put the link in the discord that, um, that I paid attention to. And it's, it's a very telling interview where he's met, he's, describing to this individual uh, in ecstatic tones we now have the technology that negates the existential threat of bio warfare okay that's well what is that well it just so happens that it turns out to be the exact technology that they're literally trying to force onto everyone as of this moment which is this um the next generation of um vaccine technologies that are based around uh, gene therapy technologies and um it's such it's such a telling interview and as you as you see it in the context of well the, the this is this is uh, you know i don't want to, i don't want to stray too much into conspiracy and it, this isn't oh, my reason <laughs> Yeah. Remind at the end if you can that, that interview that you're talking about because there's so much on your server that sometimes it's difficult for people who are not you know familiar with it to to to, to find all this information. So what you're talking about seems to be very interesting too. You know. Okay. Okay. Uh, well, well, let let me def try and diffuse it a bit to make it easier for you to um, you know broach the subject. So uh, yeah, I'll take on the burden of being the conspiracy theorist, and then you guide me a little bit, and we'll play it like that. Okay, so so if you take uh, say messenger RNA um, and gene therapies, and you know they, this is my understanding. They all in they all under development. They don't show much promise. They use them in a few vaccines uh, that are released for um, domestic cattle and stuff like that. They're ba basically in agriculture. Um, nobody can get it to work because messenger RNA is too fragile and. Uh, basically, it's not long enough lived in the bloodstream and stuff. So, so then the first breakthrough they make is fairly recent. I can't remember, maybe as recent as 2015 or something. They they make a breakthrough and they basically they have a self-amplifying messenger RNA, and that's the first time you can effectively use them, and they they, they can be uh, manufactured and marketed as a as a vaccine. But they, you know, you, there's they face at least 20 years of research before it's ever going to touch a human um, subject and like level uh, four type um, or stage four research in, in a human therapy. So then fortuitously, all of this comes along. And then suddenly under emergency 
FDA emergency regulations, they can release it within minutes. So, okay, so so now um, these, uh, so so then that that opens the door to a whole, well, a retail outlet, a pharmaceutical retail outlet, a super mall, in fact, uh, that's basically on the edge of a needle, and the needle is a conduit for amazing technologies because messenger RNA is so easy to synthesize. So it's, you you can do it quick, easy, and synthesize anything. And if you've got endless booster shots every six months, you've normalized the population that you know vaccines are a part of your life. And now we can use them as a conduit for nanotechnology into your body. And then basically this brave new world right there. So, okay, so so my, my question is first is, I went and had a look at how self-amplifying messenger RNA um, actually self-amplifies, because <laughs> I'm really interested in feedback loops and things like that. And I was kind of appalled, because as much as I looked, as, as far as I can tell, nobody knows. They know it's self-amplifying, but nobody knows the mechanism. And so that that alone was, I made the decision at that point, I'm not touching these things because I'm well aware of the systemic effects of feedback. And if you can't tell me the details of your feedback mechanism, I'm out. That's it. <laughs> so yeah, you, so I would, I would add this caveat. The, there's a difference between what you're describing as the self-amplifying RNAs, as I understand them, versus what we're seeing, which is the uh, basically a cassette of RNA wrapped in lipid. Let's let's take the Pfizer and Moderna as a separate class to the to the others, and th they're basically putting in a uh, they're getting it past the cell membrane, and once in there, the theory is is that it will degrade because it can only be read so many times through the ribosome. It becomes uh, uh, junk RNA that just gets chewed up. There's a lot of these enzymes ready to chew up messenger RNA because it's uh, it's the body doesn't want these active sequences floating around. So there's that's the argument for them being sort of self-limiting. Um, the the primary issue is with well even even before we get into the mechanisms of the, the, the therapists themselves is to put it into the context of the uh, the conspiracy framework and so the individuals who are who are um, involved in the networks which are talking about these uh, these potential problems and we can go back to 9/11 this is this is the depth of the research that we can concretely look at and the names of the people involved and you know Andrew Weber that's just let's say there's the Metzl and there's Andrew Weber and around each is a network and Metzl and Weber are working together funnily enough they're making a movie called gain of function right now um you know just uh, just it just game happens of well, it's it just shows that they're they're looking to try to monetize what it is that they're they're doing, right? And that they don't have any uh, qualms about it. I would feel very uh, very disturbed if there was um, uh, I couldn't do that. But let's just put it: that my ethics would stop me from trying to um, make a product that that's meant to build uh build on this misery i would perhaps consider a book at the end of it perhaps just just as a memoir more than anything but you know to be engaged in in these films and these uh very professional um meetings and setups that they have and that their their argumentation and approach comes directly from the uh the because it's the Patriot Act, right? It comes from the Patriot Act that was a consequence of 9-11, if we're to believe the official narrative. Now, um, yes, there were destruction of buildings on 9-11, and we all get inconvenienced at the airport. But the bigger picture is, if you read into, uh, into the uh, Patriot Act, it's a lot more about bio-warfare than plane hijackings, etc. 
And what we're seeing is the culmination of the programs that were put into place as a as part of the Patriot Act to walk us towards this solution. It's a solution by the defense side of the equation to neutralize the enemy. And the way that you neutralize the effects of the enemy is minimize the uh, the way that they can hold your population hostage, right? And this is this is all laid out uh, in exquisite detail in meeting after meeting of the uh, of this network. And like I said, there are too many to name. I encourage everyone who's a tonic live. Mark Kulak is who you should watch, and he streams once, twice a week. But he does very in depth uh, analysis of all the people that are involved and how they meet up and and how long they've been working together and. Um, from the science side to the crossover to the politics to the crossover to the corporate to the crossover to the defense side that's that's a um shape-shifting but uh, uh coordinated set of entities that are with us right now that are playing into this current set of circumstances and their goal is this uh use of this technology so you you get the people into a situation where you you normalize the 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 process that they're going through right now with this emergency use authorization uh techniques um and i would I, and, and i know lots of people are sort of flipping out about the consequences of this therapy uh, we know that there are short-term acute effects, but I, I'm of the opinion that right now they have to make it work because they they have to introduce more and more of this type of technology. That this is the pretext for the fourth industrial revolution, which is this the the gold rush is the um, biological domain and its interface with uh, digital technology and this is this is not new ideas everyone sort of had a a vision of this sort of uh the way that society would move you can go back to aldous huxley right and you know where you could pull out all the all the strains of uh his brave new world and the uh, george orwell's 1984 but you know, some is story and some is, I don't know how much they were, um, they were... Well, well they, they, they all reveal bits of what they know. So John le Carre and all of that, you know, everybody thought he, and even um, Fleming it was, um, you know, all the James Bond things, everybody thought they were just pure fiction that came from the imagination. There was nothing of the sort. The, they were all characters the guys knew they were and stuff like that. So they were revealing stuff they knew. But I would... The thing I would really like to communicate to the general public, and especially liberals who don't believe in conspiracy theories, is they think about conspiracy theories wrong. They think of them in a James Bond sort of Lex Luthor kind of way. Um, but they, the conspiracy theories don't quite work that way. What they are is they kind of communities and factions of people. They all have different agendas and they piggyback on each thing. So, you, you know, if you think of like 9-11 truthers, what they get wrong is they think that there's some monolithic you know, pyramid with some guys at the top and you can find them and they'll be around a table with pointy hoods. And you say, yeah, you might find somewhere, but they're only one faction. And my analysis of 9-11 is that it was uh, all organized by Muhammad Atta, the guy who led the attack and died in the attack. And uh, as far as I can see, he was freelancing. He had this, uh, he, he was basically going postal and he had this idea that he wanted to go out with a bang. He took his idea to the Saudis and he got uh, various factions, some of them the Bin Laden family, but mainly the Bandar family. And they financed him to go and do a thing you know, basically because they could see an upside. So that's a whole new faction with a whole new set of goals that are not aligned with Muhammad Atta's, but they, they piggyback off it. Then I think the Mossad and CIA got wind of the attack coming. They had advanced knowledge, but no, no input to it. 
And oh, I, I'm, I'm not so sure. I would, I would have to look. If we're, the, if we're going to talk about 9/11, the dancing Israelis have to be. Yeah, but they, that's the, uh, advanced knowledge. The, those, the dancing Israelis are Mossad guys who, who were there as witnesses. So everybody saw it coming. If you, but, but advanced knowledge is not the same thing as actually having input. They, they just sat back because they, they could see the advantage of doing, it. and the advantage was, was the domino theory. You know, the, I can't remember the doctrine where they went from Iraq to Iran, and they basically knocked down all of Israel's enemies one by one, starting with Iraq. They only got as far as Iraq, and they got bunked down. But th that was that was all the neocons and, you know, uh, Cheney and all that, you know, Wolfowitz and the um, uh, all, all those idiots um, were um, Crystal and all, all those guys, they had this agenda um, and, and Donald Rumsfeld and stuff. They had all these agendas and this this topple the dominoes one by one in the Middle East strategy, and they used Muhammad Atta's um, operation uh, to to justify all that. Now, that's that's my best assessment of what what happened on 9/11. Now, when you fast forward to to this, it's it's the same kind of thing. You get you get um, you get an accidental leak. And everybody, all of these factions, see it in their own way. They can see their own goals, and they're all using it to try and get uh, to further their agenda. Then, you know, eco health and stuff. They, they, you can see the big players. They, the guys that are, they're gonna be, they're patsies. They're, they're always mm -hmm. patsies in all of this. The guys always run, you know, some, you know, fall guy that can basically take the hit, and they have a plausible den deniability. And so those guys. Uh, they they're playing out of their league and they're going to get crushed, and so I, I put Peter Dayzak and, and Fauci and all those guys. So I, you know, Fauci's not the linchpin and stuff. He he's just running his own little fiefdom in the NIAB, and mm -hmm. and then all these other guys in the Pentagon and stuff that are doing these black programs, they use them like hell, and they control the financing and they you know they play the horses and and so so. What liberals are missing, the giant conspiracy that they're missing is that it's all conspiracies, that it's got nothing to do with democracy. Democracy is just a sideshow. And what the public thinks doesn't matter a damn. These guys, these guys can manipulate popu uh, popular opinion through psyops and a million other uh, strategies. So, so the, the bit that's, that's being hidden is we don't have a democracy. We, we have exactly what Eisenhower said on his valedictory speech, and that's that we have a military, scientific, and industrial complex, and we have, have these elites and oligarchs and plutocrats, and they they determining exactly what happens in the world, and it's their game. They're jockeying and playing chess and playing the big game, and we're all their pawns. And, that, and liberals don't understand that. They think that it's all about democracy and the people and voters and get out and vote and you get the right president you get the president's just just um just a lackey he's uh, just basically a front man yeah it's a figurehead and um you know the uh, anyone with half a brain understands that the left right paradigm is uh, it's just a game if you think there's a solution there you're always going to be frustrated I, I i don't have any problem with uh, that uh, that assessment um the i mean the point i wanted to get to was that there was a change in the nature of the united states and i can remember being there as that because i i arrived in the united states right after 9 11 a couple of months and the, there was this discussion as the uh, the patriot act took hold and um it got sort of rushed through it's always being renewed and the the problem or, or not the the f the factor that's staring everyone in the face is that um it's like i said it's not concerned about um planes crashing into buildings as such it's primarily about dirty bombs biological warfare and um how they how they go about uh adapting to that what what oh. do they need Oh, a lot, a lot, I'll tell you this for free. Uh, as as a person who's had to uh, to see the secret clauses in the in the um, Patriot Act, which I 
happen to have seen uh, because I've had to implement some of them. <laughs> but the vast majority of what's in the Patriot Act is is financial. It's to do with financial tracking and finances. So, so it's it's not re it's it's kind of the the wet dream of the intelligence establishment to track uh, finance and communications, and, and very little on defense or anything to do with 9/11. So yeah. Anyway, anyway, there's a very, very scary document. That the, the Patriot Act, the things that I saw, they, they state secrets, and if you breach them, they have secret military tribunals. So, so you, you, will, you, you will not be allowed to know what you're prosecuted and sentenced for. It's that bad. So you, 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 it's almost impossible to defend yourself in a tribunal because it will be secret, and you could be sentenced to life in prison um, and and they wouldn't actually tell you what your crime was, so that's that's how bad that shit is. Um, yes, and uh, we're walking into the next stage of it. And like I say, this isn't; these are not new concepts or new ideas, right? We've had people discussing this for years and years, and across sort of what would be the alternative media, for example. Um, the, but the problem is. You can't solve those issues till it emerges in front of you. And now we're in that point where it's emerging. And my, I, I have an issue with the people who are taking the current set of circumstances and embellishing them in, uh, in a fashion that is not helpful. And I could think of several large YouTube channels that are that are trying to do that that have significant followings, and then there's the other side of the equation, which um, which doesn't minimizes what's going on, and and um, you know, and and I understand their argument because we've shut down the world for them, right? And particularly in the United States, where there's this independent streak where being told what to do by bureaucrats and, uh, you know, the, <laughs> the Fouch is a tiny little man, right? But um, is drunk on power, is telling people how to live their lives. And so there's an element of pushback against uh, against that. And the... <sighs> well, the thing, yeah. the thing though is, I, I, I mean, I appreciate that you're a truther and I think the way to your approach is correct is that you want to be as truthful as possible because if they're nefarious you want to basically nail them like a legal case but mm. the, i i quite forgiving of the guys that make a kind of cartoon cartoonish conspiracy theorist of it because it's there's a whole nother group of people that don't give a rat's ass about the details they just feel in their gut that something's wrong and mm. you need to appeal to them i've often said you know the, the stuff that say QAnon and stuff comes out with it the left find so laughable and outrageous like Pizzagate and how likely it is that people are sacrificing babies and stuff. And I say, well, the guys are, are wrong in point of fact. They've got the details wrong. But in... Well, in, have they? <laughs> That's the thing that, you well, know, well, okay, yeah, yeah. I admit, I admit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I kind of regretted it as soon as I said it. But, 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 but okay, I, I don't go there. But, but, but uh, what I like to try and encourage people to say is that if you think of it as a metaphor, if you say, okay, if you don't believe that ba baby eating Satanists, literally, they are effectively, figuratively, they, they would, they, they are in that category of evil. So, so it's like, don't get too bogged down in the details. Just basically, just go with the the spirit of the thing. And so, I think that those guys are correct because they're going with the spirit of the thing. And and what what we really need to do, basically, I call us Team Human and all these guys against these transhumanist whack jobs. Uh, is basically in the final arm again is what we have to get the, the as many people as possible well not so much me because I'm nothing but somebody that has a higher profile like you is is to try and get as many people as possible to break faith with the system so any it's if you think of it like a big psyops you see the the whole you know vampire squid and all its tendrils the web is too vast to, to tackle in piecemeal like you know if you go after eco health or, or one of these nefarious things you're just going after after one of these tentacles and mm. and 
to actually go you know for the brain of the beast is you really have to get people to break faith if if large enough people break faith from the system then you can overrun it like ants basically it's byzantine the system is very very fragile and if people you know the only thing holding it together is the rank and file loyalty to the plantation but if if they break if they break faith that that's the weakest point of the whole of this monster is is that it has the the tacit faith in the system you know the liberals and all the house slaves they 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 like the plantation in fact they're more vested in the plantation than the plantation owners because the plantation owners are just hookers and they'll do anything that gives them power but the the liberals are vested in the ideology and they're vested in the system and they won't go against it if they do the moment you get a mass defection from the system it's over it's over well, I, the entire squid it's it's run out of oxygen if they don't support it so there's a there's a couple of elements to address that so the first the first is with um let's you know we've gone after the chink in the armor which was dayzak and the funding trail i would say that that's yeah, a nice pun, nice pun. <laughs> there's uh but we've got that and like i say through that we've leveraged the the jujitsu match that we're into that we we're suddenly not on the defensive and we're getting into a potential ability to get a lock on a limb in some way to leverage more out of this uh, beast that you're you're wrestling with and um i'm uh, you know i'm so i'm doing streams with uh, brendan o'connell and i'm and you know i know the people that are supporting me right i know that there are people in that there are patriots in the united states right and if there's if there's going to be some sort of pushback against the you know what's the real politic of the next year the next five years as this program which was initiated they flipped the switch right they ex the, 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 we're in a different world now we're not going back and um we we've now got to see how how the uh, the the variable sort of fall and uh, distribute oh. do, do you hear that yeah, what was that? The, the it's basically the jets have been flying over. Basically, they just they really <laughs> crack my windows. But Greece and Turkey are, are uh, rattling are, sabers. Are really, yeah, hotting up. Yeah. Then you're gone. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's you know we've got Dayzak. I think they have to. They're going to have to throw him away, or, or the that organization. It's going to crumble. And uh, great um the next part is the leveraging against the as you let's use your plantation metaphor and that's this you've seen this crazy push for the for the uh the the therapies that they want to they want to institute on people now um in the united states it's less it's it's split half half and half half have taken half haven't and this is where this is where i think you're beginning to see the fault line of you know how how it's going to play out now look i've i've tried to be as scientific and as realistic as possible in the uh, uh, in through all of this through through this whole narrative from the from the beginning and my my allegiance would lie to those that would go for independence now in in that population now so we've got half the country because it, it'll pivot everything's going to pivot around the united states and the, the rest of the world will adjust as uh, it's it sees opportunity and, and, and the 51st state as well uh, yes, the uh, yeah, our greatest ally. The um, well, there's there's a new one now, right? They want to make Washington D.C. a state of its own, and um, so. so. <laughs> but, yeah. no, I think that is still the same state. It's uh, Washington D.C. is uh, you know, and Israel is both the fifty-first state. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, uh, wavy. Um, the so in in that 
in that context, okay, and under the extreme social pressure of them pushing this program out, and this program is based in the uh, the defense posture of the United States or, or the military industrial complex of the United States that's saying, we've got this um, way that we're going to maneuver society. In their mind, the threat of biowarfare is the existential threat, and they're going to try and manipulate everyone into, into that paradigm. Now, um, if it's taken 50 years between Kennedy's, as it was Kennedy who was talking about the military industrial complex. No, Eisenhower. 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 Well, well, Eisenhower. Kennedy did too, but Eisenhower is the classic. He was the first one. Yeah, Eisenhower was the first one that just said that we're in a danger. We're in danger of this happening. And Kennedy military basically. scientific industrial elites, yeah. Yeah. And then Kennedy said it's happened, right? And, and we've gone from there to them you know the, the evidence looks very strong around and it, it really looks like there's a connection from 9 11 to now in respect to the programs that were being run in the in the apparatus of the state for example so the the, the department of defense and all these other agencies which have become semi-autonomous and interact when they need to and then pull back and then it becomes virtually impenetrable for the, the public. There are, there are over 2,000. The, the public doesn't realize how many black agencies there are. So they mm -hmm. all fall under the... Occasionally you see things like, I think, 1.3 trillion or some number like that was was uh, went through a budget hole and everybody, like, you know, hardly appeared in the news, but it, was, it basically disappeared in the defense. But whenever you see those accounting anomalies, then all of those are done, uh, it's basically, it, they're often put under agriculture and stuff. If you see a monstrously big agriculture budget it's um, or subsidy, it's it's black ops and, or, well, black agencies. So, and they, actually, it's not all that secret. You, you um, uh, on PBS, they've, they've run, um, Frontline has done documentaries on how many agencies there are that are actually secret and they, they all in little places. I've run across them in like tiny little places like Thousand Oaks. And there's, you know, these guys were an import export co company on the, you know, on the, the floor above us. And all these guys, these men in black guys, I mean, literally Agent Smiths in black suits with the black thing and the little yeah. coil out the ear. And one day I got pissed off and I confronted them. And I said, come on, man, this is a fucking secret agency. You guys are using my using my taxpayer money and they were quite okay about it and they said yeah they admitted they said yeah the, this is all and they were friendly and <laughs> they, they didn't hide much they said basically yeah this well, it's still it's still a human being when you contact it like that when you make contact like that <laughs> they're, yeah, they're, they're, yeah, uh, they, they're patriots so they, they they're misguided um and but you see there again they're not Everybody has a different idea of the Constitution. I think most of them would say they're defending the Constitution. But the interpretation of the Constitution is very different. It goes all the way down to the Mormons who think it's a, an addendum to the Ten Commandments and a religious document, which I think it was an anti-religious document myself. <laughs> so we're, we're, in a, we're in a situation where, you know, the United States is polarized to a, a level that I don't know when we when the last civil war happened. I don't I don't think I think it's way beyond the civil rights movements of the sixties. And the issue right now is the agencies that you're talking about. Um, they're legion, and uh, they they're all they're all acting in ways uh, designed to nudge the public and um the politics in particular directions this is that this is the whole point of the weaponized uh warfare and um uh what's it the interactive or in internet interactive activities uh patrick bergy and um all these organizations as um the the backbone of that um quasi military private complex the black and blackwater dynacor the cambridge analytica all these all these groups and there's many many I, if you start poking and all the think tanks 
Atlantic Council, like I said, that's one of our focuses right now. But there are there are many that are that are all not even competing, but they're they're there pushing parts of the program, and it makes it very difficult for someone who's to who's got to go to work and look and feed their kids and and what have you and just get by. Uh, it makes it virtually impossible for them to uh, to penetrate, and it's left to individuals like myself and like i'm very lucky and, and if i may say to follow up what hugh was telling you kevin about the plantation even if we get people to lose faith in the system and enough to defect and to get the slaves out of the plantation our group works a lot also on getting the plantation out of the slave yeah. and that is a very important aspect of our conversations and i wonder what your what your uh, followers uh, doing in terms of of this change of of uh, it's deep deprogramming deep 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 well, the, you, see, the, you see, even if you expose this one thing, that it, it, you're just chopping one head off the gorgon, and it's not. It's just going to grow back. So you you can't really fight it that way. And um, it's. I mean, you have to fight it, but the, this kraken cannot be defeated by lopping off heads. It, ultimately, you have to basically get people to defect from the system, because they actually adore it, and so that, that's the biggest the biggest problem is is that if you, if you can stay in the in if you can stay in the the labor camp, and turn the prisoners one by one, it's fairly easy to to overrun the guards. But if you say you know oh there's this. The, you know, we're all being uh, roasted in this gas chamber in one corner and there's an oven in the other and now it's exposed. You won't get very far that way. In some ways, everybody kind of knows it. And you get and, and, a system of therapists and yeah. uh, are trying to get people to think that they are wrong and that they have to adjust to a rotten system. And we, we're getting to the point where, as we talk about all the time, uh, Mike and you and others in the group, we know that the the insane are sane, and the and the sane are insane in this system. But it's almost counterproductive to see to to actually point out what they're doing and how how evil it is. You you have to really start uh, with kind of drawing out the the humanity in each one of the inmates. And if you if you can get them saying, then they can see it all. But it's 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 kind of a, you know you can't handle the truth. Is mm. the majority of people can't and don't want to. I mean, I'm completely persona non grata reason for a number of reasons. But one of the reasons is that that a I rubbish what you what you are saying that we have no future in space. And you know the whole idea is, is very very unpopular with with everybody here in my Sagan community. But that there are no aliens out there. That the evidence, if you you know, they were spouting you know science and go by the evidence. And I say, if you go by the evidence and the science, then Carl Sagan was wrong. There are no aliens out there, and they hated it. The, the idea that there's no Star Trek future in space is, is like people got seriously fucking angry. The other thing I got, uh, I got chucked off some guy's boat and like you know. Well, didn't speak to me for a couple of weeks because I said Elon Musk is an idiot. I said I'm, I know these types. I'm, I'm South African. You see a dime a dozen, and they, they grift it. He's, he's just basically gr grifting off government subsidies. Mm. Boy, you, I mean, I, you know, I couldn't have, uh, you know, I was like dissing Allah to a mullah. It's very, mm. basically these things run so deep in the population, and what you're taking away is the the their hopeful project so they, they will round on you for exposing they, everybody knows that, that this is an evil beast the thing is that they've sold out to it so that when you point out that this beast is evil you're saying you've married and sold out to an evil enterprise they're not friendly towards you it's yeah. only outsiders and incels and people that are already are out, uh, on the fringe of the system and have already basically been ejected from it that you can actually recruit. And what you, don't, you don't want the ejectees, you want the people, you know, like you say, they're patriots with their fingers on the buttons and stuff on the inside. It's those guys, it's it turn guys in the Pentagon and stuff like that. It's, it's very much what Q's doing. So you have to, you know, you can appeal to the outside and get, you know, kind of demagoguery of, of the misfits, 
But the discontents of society are not really it. It's, it's the, the, the apostates from the society that are really valuable because they are in the seats of control. You have to get in the cockpit of this, of this aircraft um, and, uh, and, and not just shout from the back, if you will. Yes, and you know this. So you asked what, uh, Sophie asked, what was the, what was our group doing in order to make the adjustments that that are coming? So there's there's very much a push, and it's a very nice dialogue of people trying to become self reliant more and more by you know, growing their own food and being able to be more off grid than they currently are. And there's, I, I think, um, I would say almost you've got a pessimistic view of the populace almost, particularly at the, at the US level, because there's so much, once you get out of the cities of the United States and you get into, you get into the countryside, there are many, many people that are just, uh, they've got this mindset for, um, prepping and uh, and waiting for the system you know this is this is the uh, the strength and achilles heel of the of the us is that um it's a revolutionary they celebrate the revolutionary culture and th there's many many uh individuals that are that are looking at the current system know that they're being rob left and right across multiple levels and and are waiting for it to implode under its own contradictions and i would say i would say we're very much at that point right now so, where so, the so i've got a button here so i feel very very strongly on this point because i feel i have some precognition of how this goes down you're absolutely right on everything you said but it's it's terribly terribly dangerous the people in the country are tremendous risk. So the in the the whole rotten problem is the guys in the city. The the guys in the city are ultimately the biggest losers because they have no supporting habitat or any natural support. They have, they have no skills or ability. So you're absolutely right on the long term vision. The problem is the short term vision, and in in the short term, the people in the country suffer terribly. So the way it works is they wipe out the people in the country to support the people in the city first, and then the city collapses. And so you see it again and again in China. You'll see it again and again. Well, you see it starting now, just with a hike in food prices. So in in my video series, where I'm busy starting a big psyops, is in the very second one, I, I, I realized I didn't speak strongly enough, but in two parts, I basically try and convince people not to do a parallel po polis not to go off grid and not to to go for the country you see it, it's it's a trap you see what if you take something that's definitely coming like food shortages water shortages and that implies pandemics is is that uh if you look what happened in china and in russia they both you know this is to totalitarian systems and this is where they're going america is going to be totalitarian this is why you have to think this way is the in Beijing they let the the people starve. If you look at the the famine in China under Mao, they they let the people in the country starve. They they actually sent, feed the cities. Yes, it's. But, um... but, but they sent missives out to the country and the country commissioners, and they said, even if you have to all starve, you must get food to Beijing. Otherwise, there will be a counter revolution. And so they lit and they did it with the kulaks. It wasn't uh, Stalin. Um, Stalin and the the Holodor, uh, what is it? Uh, in, 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 in what? Yeah, but basically, when when they starved out all the kulaks, it wasn't only collective punishment for the kulaks. It was also to get the food into the cities because the mm. greater problem was a rebellion in the city. Mm. And so, so the way it goes down is they decimate the country, and the, the, you basically yeah, but that's a, that's a, that's a hard thing to do. In... Come and get you that's that's that that's the harder thing to do in the united states so you know i have a back and forth with brendan o'connell about this because um he's he has a very he has a very pessimistic view that um as we walk forward into this ai future that the um that the real-time 
analytics is able to predict the movements of individuals they know who probably will put up a fight and they can focus on those uh, individuals and i think that there's a, a um there's a fail safe in the united states that is difficult to get around which is just the degree of armament available to the public uh, the everyday uh, the everyday joe can um you know <laughs> it, it, it they can put up resistance right if you've got uh, a couple of neighbors and you you've got uh sight lines down the end of the street and you know at each and every direction no, no. You can, yeah so, so, you so, can so hold this off a lot. Africa. so this is the problem with that is you don't have a target so you you're shooting at an idea so they you you can be armed to the hilt what you'll wind up doing is pawning those arms to pay for food for your kids so it, 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 the, this, it's, it's, it's good from the point of tactics and resilience in, say, a, in a battle, which they might come, but you, you really, it's a big mistake in America, especially on the prepping side, to get this very narrow vision, and it comes from Hollywood. Basically, it's a very 12-year-old version of collapse. It's not very well informed. And, and basically, you don't have people coming up the street. You, you have basically your assets seized in the bank account. You, you People get sick and you have no access to health care. You get whittled down with nothing to shoot. And that's what they don't understand. Yeah, so this is, this is why I think uh, there's um, this fail-safe that I'm talking about. And you know, a good example is on uh, the sponsor that helps pay for the the streaming to get us around the censorship. Brubaker Brew arms. Yeah. <laughs> yes. uh, he's, he's had a few missives with me. <laughs> he don't like me. But uh, there's this streak of independence in these people where they can feed themselves, they can protect themselves, they're in, they're in communities that they can organize that um, they're not going to surrender their arms like they did under Mao or under the um, Bolsheviks. I don't see that happening. So I think it's going to be a much more subtle array of adjustments, right? And, you know, maybe it's a split of the United States. I hope that's not the case. I, I really do. I really hope the United States stays as the, well, the light on the hill that it should be. And um, it gets its act together and we... Uh, we're, we're able to sort of push back that way because it's the it's the sovereignty and individualism that is the the bedrock of the United States that that allows us to push back against the uh, the digital tyranny, if you like. And yes, of course, a lot of those. But, but what about cooperation and mutual aid? Yeah, I, I, I think that this I mean, is, that is more more in America. I think I, I actually I've, I've got to be candid. I write all these guys off. They haven't got a hope. So the reason the reason is, let me explain, since that's such a dramatic statement. But think of this. Imagine this world where they, the, the di what they're going to do is a UBI. They're going to do di a digital currency. You'll have to have a, 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 a phone. If you don't have a phone, the government will give you, give you one, but with a subsidy. But everybody, it, we're very close to the point where they mandate everybody must have a cell phone. And then even if not, they, they will do something like, uh, you know, COVID passports with QR codes on your phone. They'll find a way to get a cell phone in everybody's hand. Bill Gates, everybody's doing it. But uh, I, I'll give you just, just one aside is that already in France, they're so far advanced that an anarchist group was identified as an underground terrorist group. The first, the first moment they got scrutiny was they, they gave up their cell phones. And, and, and they immediately... Uh, the uh, Interpol and the French police uh, swooped on them. It was that that was the signal. They gave up their cell phones. So just first know that. Now, what your cell phone is going to be used to do is something like a UBI. And UBI is not going to be, oh, now you've got money, you can go off grid. No. Everyone, all the spending and what you're allowed to spend on will be done by all the things like Alison McDowell talks about, the things that, uh, you know, you, you will have, um, say, social credits. And you, you have impact uh, tokens and things like that. But they will say, okay, you can use this much of your UBI, can only be spent on food. 
and then they'll say exactly what kind of food and then they will say well, this much only on education for kids and you'll have a little supplementary allowance for your kids and this is how education will be done and then that individuality then now counts against you because you, you get eroded on everything single thing if you, you might att attend a, a church then they would give you a, a a social credit saying that people that attend church have better outcomes in terms of say um, crime or some other social good and so then they'll basically give you a credit to go to that church they'll also be manipulating that church its 501c status will be dependent on what it does things like non-violence things like giving up your guns so the priests might you might wind up in a situation where you have to stop have to choose between the bible you're thumping and your you know ar-15 the priest might be telling you the time for AR-15s is gone and then, you know, Bali Bar in the Bible. And why? Because they're trying to keep their 501c status. See, that's the world we're getting in. The atomized world is really, really bad. The way we see it is you've got to go underground. You've got to see all this stuff coming and you have to have mutual networks underground. Part of the reason why we're talking to you, basically, we take, by the way, we take a hit on the left, because our audience is mainly on the left, although we're not left or right. But it just so happens that the anarchists are skewed a bit towards the, the left, which is something I, I don't like, but it's just a historical fact. But but the reason why you find, you'll find more and more of anarchists on the left reaching out to libertarians, we basically call you guys libertarians, but, but but you will find us reaching out to the libertarians because we need an alliance. Every All of us uh, need this underground alliance across, uh, across boundaries. And the, the, the big problem that we see in, in your side is, is this, this religiosity has to go. It's, it's part of the slave narrative. And the other thing is this independence uh, kind of pioneer spirit and relying on the gun is good. I mean, keep your guns and fucking learn how to use them. But you, you have to get out of the minds of the bunker mindset that you're going to use them to protect your daughter from the anarchist hordes. Because that scenario is very, very rare. Basically, it, it will come in like South Africa where they hit the farmers. But you see, the, the farmers in South Africa, basically you're going down the route of the farmers in South Africa. So you must, if you want to go down this route, then you may, you need to do the research. And I'll, I will tell you endlessly what your fate is, but it, essentially it's pretty much uh, you get hit one by one. Um, you get taken down in brutal, brutal um, circumstances uh, one by one on these farmsteads. You don't get to use your weapons. It's basically you don't get the chance to get your AR-15 out. It's just not that situation. It's much more likely where you get out of your car to open the gate and the guys jump you. It's more like that. The, the guys will study you. The guys will get you. Your, your weapons will not help you. What the yeah, farmers the, the, do is, is to make loose alliances that are essentially militias to control that area. Those militias then run up against the state. And then basically you're forced into being an anarchist mutualist. Yeah, so that's, I, I think that's uh, a given that, well, you know, you still, you still don't know the state of the, uh, the apparatus that you're going to be going up against because um it it's not well, well you do it's, it's, it's not in, it's not impervious I mean, they, they, and, you, you I, I would i would really counter that the basically totalitarian mindset is very uniform and very predictable they're all vogons they have no imagination and there's not much difference between national socialists in germany or soviet socialists in russia or communist socialists or Marxist socialists in China. There's not much different. What you're seeing in China today doesn't, what you see in Israel today is, is really not that much different from national socialism in Germany. Well, and, but there's, there's the observation that each one of those systems, those isms, have imploded over time, right? And this is, and like I, I agree with you with respect to networking. That's what, you know, we work hard on that. Uh, in the background with, um, you know, the technical aspect just for communications, should things go down, that type of thing. Um, you know, the understanding that you need to have, uh, well, I, so the way I've, be, I've begun to sort of try to describe it to people is what, you, what we're up against are the think tanks, the quasi non-governmental groups and these defense 
quasi defense private industry information gathering networks and i would argue the scale that we're already operating at and the our ability to process information from multiple feeds and multiple how, how should we say hotspots right whether it be wars kicking off in the middle east to lab leaks in china to um the the, the, the pantomime that is the US uh, political system. We're getting that information in real time. We're passing it in, in a way that I would argue is way more efficient than the, uh, the, the think tanks because we're, we're almost non-ideologically aligned, right? Whereas if you take a think tank like Atlantic Council or any other, they have to fit everything within a paradigm and they're trying to maneuver themselves and also because they're trying to maneuver for money. So they become blind in a way to uh, all aspects of the, all, all dimensions of the information that we're having to operate with. So I would say that we're actually, um, we're, in a, we're in a better position to be able to respond uh, in real time to compared to the what what you're talking about which would be the official response of moving government hardware from point a to point b to what they think is control no 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 situation. no no you misunderstand what what i'm trying to get okay, let me try and convey two things one of them they will use structural violence on you so what the, the misassumption is that basically you know like safety's off rack and rack and load um, it is basically um, that you are assaulted. By, uh, you may be assaulted by, say, a police unit or a renegade unit or paramilitaries in your house. That That's not what, what the danger is. It's relatively easy to defend yourself in that circumstance. The, this, what the b huge blind spot that you're missing is that they wear you down by structural violence. So that's the first thing. The second thing is... Yeah, you're, you're talking about things like schools and medicine and this, the, the, where you have to interact with the yes. structures yeah, that I'm are in Yeah, I'm talking about taxes. They, they will yeah, come and get you like David Koresh because basically some guy will come with a clipboard and said, have you paid your fucking water tax? And you mm. say, well, we, we gather rainwater. And they say, it doesn't matter. There's a hose pipe ban and you've been, you know, somebody snitched on you that you're basically using, you're watering vegetables and you're not allowed to do that in a drought, rainwater or not. And you, you say, well, okay, we get it from groundwater. You say, well, you're not allowed anymore to get anything mm. from the water table. So therefore, you're in violation, 2000 uh, buck fine for watering your tomatoes then basically you will have to appear in court. If you don't, they'll seize your property and your AR-15 and your wife and kids will see you in jail. So they, they'll get, that's the way they get you. They'll get you with a poll tax. They'll get you with a dog tax. They'll get you with a fucking gun tax. Well, so that's, that's, not the that, way that's extant already, right? I would, I would yeah, yeah, say but that. Just, but here, I'm finished. So the real thing to think about is think of the long grind. Basically, these are like the wheels of justice. They move slow, but they grind exceedingly fine. All these guys are looking for a showdown. The preppers are making the biggest mistake of their fucking lives because they're looking for a big Armageddon and a showdown. And not oh yeah, and I, I, I'm I would be but, so I would caution these, people against but, that. Well, well, here's the thing that that I think you're missing in your paradigm is look for the long haul. All these organizations you say the NGOs and the think tanks and all these agencies that they can be exceedingly long-lived and I mean they can outlast the grid they can outlast the internet they can be the very last things that, that go down the his, history shows that so so you you can't think in terms of defeating them in in that way right you probably the best thing is to accelerate the collapse because they end at the end of collapse the big danger is that you 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 might uh, win the battle, but you'll lose the war. It's the, the you see they they on your side you're thinking too much in terms of this one showdown battle. And it's like oh no 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 no, no. it's, no, it's a I've, long I've... long drawn out. They can draw the situation out with geoengineering, with social engineering. They can engineer everything. They can do religious engineering. They'll do psyops on you. And here's where you're vulnerable. That individuality that you have is lethally bad. Because they'll split your ranks. There, there's so many fissures inside the libertarian right. 
is basically I can split you just between Michigan and say basically some other state. I, I can just say I'll get you a guy, Michigan against Alabama. Put two guys in a room and I'll have a fist fight. That individuality is lethal to you. Um, so, you know, the, the consensus that I've been trying to put in because uh, things are accelerating right now, I do, I do think we're in a point of acceleration, that much is obvious, is right now is to, um, as, uh, as human beings, individuals, families, our job right now is to survive the maneuvering of these systems as they reorientate themselves. Right. You don't go looking for conflict agreed, and agreed, uh, agreed, yeah. and the the default position right now is to um, not give your data over, or, or, you know, just make it a step harder for them to get the data on you. Right. Because it's all, it'll all come down to information. Get, 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 get off social media except for an anonymous. Uh, uh, yeah. I mean, you know, there's there's. Um, there's that aspect and this is something that i i said to you know people that watch my streams it's just that because i'm the one that's public right now and you know there's a few there's no need for anyone else to be public right yeah, there's Use... some defense for you there's some your your profile is actually a defense because you're well enough known now that basically they can't take you out in two nefarious away mm. yeah i mean i'm not worried in uh, in that respect I, I mean my concern more is an aggressive move by the chinese and um i would be a <laughs> i would be a fault criminal or something you know because i've i've been critical of their state very uh very harshly over the last year but you know uh for as soy ridden as the japanese are i think there would be a lot of resistance against the chinese physically coming into the country yeah I think it, it, safe. I think mm. um but it comes it comes down to how the west reacts and a lot of this is just in response to the the rot that's set into the institute oh, it's not rot it's the transformation of the institutions that um that's being driven by the by wokeism for want of a better uh, vernacular and how that responds and um as a system it can it can look all encompassing because it it targets your children to your employment to everything you know the, the social pressures and constructs are immense but thankfully people people are conscious to it right the i the, the this this sense of well it's it's almost commun it is communism in a way it, it's let's not beat around the bush it, when it emerges fully it, it'll have all the traits of a sort of hugh sorry to interrupt but i won't i'll be very brief but we we introduced the idea of accelerating the mm. device of the system accelerating collapse and mm. where are you going with your groups on this topic would that be something you discuss or mm. agree with yeah so um the i guess the general or, or, or the conclude not conclusions but the the real-time analysis that we're doing right because that you know that's we're all we're all involved in the same game now we're all using the same technologies as these groups okay uh just that we're the we're the rebel like we don't have the funding that these but the funding for them is is also a burden right and that and that we don't have right and so the ex the acceleration comes when there's this um passive resistance and the passive resistance is the, well i'm not i'm not going for your injection i'm not going uh for the uh, non-cooperation yes yeah non-compliance yeah, yeah. and that that suddenly becomes a problem for them right yeah, because, this is exactly what i'm saying so yeah we are 100 percent in agreement on this one and and so that's that's the stance right now and in in that stance um you organize and the more that you can build the networks and find people who who are willing to operate coherently and in, in, in it, it's a it's free autonomous set of individuals and the ideological outline of it is 
broad and flexible that we we try and take as many views as as possible um is is this yeah yeah the the sit back and and wait and in that sort of gandhi approach um the other side is having to maneuver and expend their ammunition and and we can then adjust to them and i i would yeah so sorry but, but yeah so we're absolutely on the same page so i um, i'm just cutting you short to save you some breath but the the so we call that wu wei and the, the that is basically the, the way to do it is to is timing but the the thing is uh, you can't be passive and let the system react. You have to wait for the system to have its guard down and then basically strike. So but that's what we've done. That's what we've done. Is yes, yeah. you know, there, there has yeah, but, been. Okay, resistance. But you, you you struck in the sense of a psyops. I'm talking in basically full spectrum resistance. So mm -hmm. there, there'll be there'll there'll definitely come a moment where where you actually called uh, on your metal, and then you 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 have to have a militant response, and that that's coming um potentially but um there's also there's also the the effects from mass movement right and this is this is why the united states is so critical because you know you might you've argued for it being a problem i would i would say that um used correctly which is um you know castle doctrine community and uh, let these people try to make their make their moves and they've made they've made real and, and I'm, I'm not exaggerating here they've made massive strategic moves that i think over the next six months to a year are, are, are going to crystallize events that um it, and as we're watching it will be and it will enable us to respond uh, quickly and adapt quickly. That and there are there are multiple possibilities to what that is. But let's keep it in a domain of um, actual events that we can see unf unfolding, and, and that revolves around the use of these therapeutics and the population that's been that's moved in to uh, take those uh, to take that pathway. The other pathway is just to be the other control group. Now, in in flipping the switch that the, the way they have there's enough understanding of the science to say well there could be there could be real potential problems with that group that did that went down the corporate on on the corporate needle let's think of it like that they're, they're stuck with the corporate program and they're they're going to be caught in this cycle of they're already telling you you need booster shots etc they're, they're spinning this narrative and um and it it might be the case that okay we see a, a mid to long term consequence from the therapy itself that is uh potentially you know that can bring a system down because people will be upset you, you well, know, well it'll the, trigger people to divorce from the system it'll yes. break, break loyalty to the system yes yes and then um but also there's the the flip side of that which is this idea of uh escape mutants because of the pressure put on by the uh the the therapies that the are being yeah they're basically breeding breeding super uh, strains super, super strains, strains. Yeah. Yeah. That, uh, flemish um, doctor uh, vet uh gert van oh God, gert van den bosch yeah yes. he, he yeah. got his uh, position on um, mm. vaccinating during a pandemic and um, his contradiction to his theories are about the uh, the possibility that the, the the variants are not so different that they would compromise immunity to the first one, you know. So it's, there's a debate on that at the moment. It's not. Mm. not yeah, fully. we don't know. We don't know. This is the whole point right now. Is that it, it doesn't matter who you are, whether you're the head of Moderna, the head of the CIA, the NSA, or us sitting here. We're all looking at the same data. Right, and they might have advantages by getting something a few hours ahead, but in this in this world that we live in right now, it's impossible to keep things undercover very long, and we can um, we can adapt accordingly. And I'll give you a good example of the last week. So people are flipping out about magnets sticking to the 
injection sites. Have you seen that? Yeah, yeah, we follow that. Yeah, yeah. So, but, but um, I, th I thought it was all bunk. I didn't think it was no, but that's but there's there's actually a very coherent explanation as to what's happening. Um, now, uh, just just that fact alone that people have seen this, it wasn't described to them in the uh, the discussion when they were when they were supposed to be able to give informed consent. Um, are already turning people against the the corporate. Let's just call it the corporate narrative, right? I, 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 rather than trying to make it too complex. Um, but in in the manufacture of this technology, the, the separation of the product that you want is is dependent on um, nano magnetic particles that bind that extract out the RNA that you want. And I would presume they thought they had a wash of some kind that took that um, magnetic nanoparticle out to give the pure uh, RNA. And it's obvious that it hasn't done that. And they, so they use a kind of electrophoresis, right, to to get magnetic separation. Of that. No, these are these are literal sort of uh, small particles of charged uh, iron, metal. And in, in, it, in the base, in, basically in the, in the serum that the, like the paste well, I, would, that, I, I would argue that it's not meant to be there m m with the methods. But as, as part of the, think of it as the brewing part of the... The, the manufacturing process, it, it, it's one of the steps in the manufacturing yeah. process that has actually polluted the downstream process. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I would, I would guess that there are hot batches and non-hot batches, depending on who you, you know, who's running those machines to do the, <laughs> you know, yeah, there's who's, someone who's in there cleaning that, them. If, if they're yeah. running twenty-four by seven, and the guys are trying to get us, like, yeah. you know, they compromised a lot of the cleaning cycles and stuff. Uh, yeah, yeah, and we, it's already happened. There was that huge case. Uh, I forget the name of the company in New Jersey that was basically given the license for two vaccines, and uh, they screwed it up. They screwed up the. Uh, the production and, and, and the, the federal government gave them immunity uh, of prosecution. So it's like, that's a big mistake. That, that mm -hmm. is a huge fucking mistake right there because mm -hmm. basically you know that every plant manager is just uh, chuck the safety manager out the window as soon as they mm -hmm. had indemnity. So it's mm -hmm. a big mistake. So I would, I would just say we're in this situation where um, you just, you, you watch you watch the system go through the motions and you're seeing it make mistakes all the time and this is this is why it was like the in when they go back in history they will look that the lab leak argument it was the critical factor right that that crystal or, or, or formed the crack that formed the fissure that's going to split the edifice open because it, th there's so many lies and there's so many connections around it. And from there, it impacts everything. And it doesn't, it doesn't matter what, you, you know, you're talking about the, the tracking and the, the, you know, putting everything on blockchain and the, um, you know, the, uh, you know, the impact goals that they're going to have you. Tokens, yeah, the impact yeah. Tokens. Uh, that they'll have you trying to do. But um, we've got into, uh, we've got into, the mechanisms of dialogue about how they're supposed to be instantiated and changed it already. And they're trying to respond in real time right now, the same way that we are, but it, it shows more and more people, oh, this is, this is what you're heading to. Um, are you going to, um, how, are, how are you going to respond to that? And um, the, Look, the the, the, well, the working well, I class. I don't think they are going to respond, right? So, oh, so but there's, basically, there's a you're lot. driving them. They're already in learned helplessness. You're driving them deeper into despondency. So it's it's not bad, but but I must I must I, I think you misunderstood me on on a thing. So so about the individuality stuff. So America, absolutely, I agree with you. I'm not writing America off. America is the decisive battleground. This is yeah. I think we both agree that the decisive battleground is America. I, I'm really worried about the preparation of Americans because of this individuality. They they, they get over it quickly. Um, but I should 
you're saying we, I'm actually mad. But they, they, they uh, if you see in say the 1930s, uh, one of the things that Roosevelt was responding against was the hobos camps and the, the, the rise of the homelessness, which were becoming more of a commune and they were really scared of communism breaking out, particularly in the, you know, in, in those uh, disenfranchised peoples. And so that had far more to do with Roosevelt's New Deal than, than all the social goals that they teach in the schools now. It was, it was a defense against con communism, which was breaking out uh, in, in those disaffected crowds. So we're getting those disaffected crowds. You're seeing the hobo thing, the, the secret languages, everything. You're starting to see, I mean, go down to Venice Beach and you'll see those communities arising again that were their big threat to the establishment. So, so it's, so, and I mean, you can see in there, and because if you go up to Portland and stuff, uh, we're as tight as shit up there, man. The mutual community is very, very strong. Now, I don't write the, the South and the right off, uh, you know, the far right off in terms of the, they just too insular and uh, fam family oriented, not, not quite that badly. They, they can get together, but it is a, 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 real, a real danger. In terms of basically the bigger battleground, even beyond this current pandemic, which let's face it, the, the value I think to us is as a psyops. So the, the, the stuff that you're doing, the only result you're going to get out of it is, is psyops. And so you have to lower your sights and think of that. You can't get to the stage where you have, you know, the, the QAnon awakening and, uh, you know, they have the big drop where they expose everybody and stuff. You could do that, but like, it would be water under the bridge and everybody in the mainstream has selective amnesia so they would forget it quickly so the the bigger aim is to to get them to break loyalty and and then this is one piece in breaking loyalty but you you have to think in terms of how a disaffected population responds and the way is as exactly as you said it's about low level wrecking and disobedience and non cooperation and that you can get in spades because it's very easy to go from apathy and to learned helplessness to the forbidden therapy for that. The, the great therapy for hopelessness is wrecking, monkey wrenching and wrecking the system in a stealth manner is, is more well, it's a tonic, <laughs> it's a tonic. Basically that's, and so you can lead people down that path and, and against the system as a whole with the, the obvious caveat that you have, they reasonably have to know that what comes after that is is a post grid environment where where they lose all these comforts. But look at the well, example. Look at the example of the pipeline. Uh, what's the name of it that happened there recently? Colonial. Uh, you know, uh, uh, yeah. no, not Excel, the co colonial. Yeah, right? look, look, that's an example. No, let's just. I mean, imagine that this was. Uh, some kind of campaign of monkey wrenching online or whatever. Some, but look, that, that sort of operation had, you know, had far-reaching consequences. Did you did you discuss this among among you uh, among your? Yeah, this is, this is this is a this is a key feature of uh, our discussions, and I would I would encourage everybody. You, you want to know why it's happening, and um, this is where you need to get into the uh, the tech aspect. Um, I like to listen to Brendan O'Connell's take that a lot of stuff is backdoored. Um, you're seeing uh, it's being driven by, uh, you know, let's say, Israeli um, intelligence programs, Talpiot program, Unit 8200. Uh, these are the people that have backdoored all these systems and are able to hold them to ransom. And the it's not just that. Like it's it's in Ireland at the moment with the health system that they're completely wrecked, and they've accused yeah. uh, they've accused a, a white wizard spider group from Russia instead of pointing the. Yeah, but it's not. Them. It's not Russia. <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> it's, <laughs> there are Russians in it. There yeah. are Russians in it. But it, it's uh, a, a lot of this is the um, the cyber domain where Benjamin Netanyahu has said cyber is the real power, and this is. Uh, th th this is the, the well, well, these new powers flexing their muscles. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, they, it, yeah. Basically, they came, Ireland came out on the side of the Palestinians. And what do you know, the next few days, there's like um, instantly the healthcare system is frozen with ransomware. 
Mm. Like, it's like it's been behind the Palestinians for 20 years. I mean, mm. it's just not no, it's not new. Yeah, but this time, this time the Minister for Foreign Affairs went very, very strong on it, and it and just happened top, three days now. And people are, are, can't get into hospital and treatments are not... There's, there's seven days now into the cyber attack and things mm. are still in shambles. Mm. So, yeah. honestly, I mean, a I... ransomware from Russia, no. No, no. It's it's no. all your systems have been backdoored through uh, the chip designs. A lot of it uh, comes from uh, Israel. And this is, this is the silent warfare that... Um, you've got to expect that by warfare, well, it's, the... It's been going on for a decade or more. Uh, so uh, it does, I mean, Intel has been putting backdoors and win Windows is basically an arm of the MSA, NSA. It's, 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 they've been putting ba uh, backdoors in, in Windows and stuff since the 90s. Um, yeah. But the uh, what's happened recently, I, I mean, I, I, I would give you 50-50 odds that the chip shortage now is them trying to get a clean chipset. So the, every every nation is trying to get uh, an uncompromised chipset, but the the problem with that and and deployed in the military, the the problem with that is you can almost count down based on their progress on that score to when we go to war because your logical conclusion is if if all the world is scrambling for clean chipsets in in military hardware um, to event a day one cyber attack uh, on uh, World War Three. They, you know, you assume that as soon as they get there, we're in a wartime situation. So it's it's oh, it's you're, all, you're already it. there. People people need to understand that you're already in that situation, right? These these uh, these events are ongoing. You don't hear about uh, a lot of it, but um, what was the uh, someone in the chat will tell me fire. Was the company, but it was a it was a very very important company. I forget the name now. Now, but Fire basically, uh, Firestrike or something like that. But, oh, Firestrike, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, you know, this is this is the level that's being um, a toyed, not toyed with, um, attacked. Right, the inter you had a mass internet outage not yesterday, the day Sorry, before. Me, I have yeah, to, yeah. Just a second, a neighbor just called in, and here it's just, I'll I'll be back in a. Okay. okay. Uh, there, so there a few DDoS attacks and internet out outages. You're mm. kind of following them, yeah. And so, uh, you know, this is part of the dialogue. This is the process of passing information and making it so that people can um, adapt in in real time, and not only that, but not panic, right? And um, you know, but I, I would say we need to do more with respect to um, peer to peer type communications because they could flip off everything. But I mean, I'm literally isolated from most of, of well, all of the people that I speak to because everyone else is in Europe, Australia, or the United States. There's no way I could set up a sort of local radio node across. Uh, so, so we had this expression called the intersubjectivity synchronicity telephone, which is a kind of out there concept, but it's um, it comes from Ken Kesey and the psychedelic revolution. But the, the the basic premise is that everybody on the same wavelength. You don't have to think too much in terms of literal communication and sort of redundant radio nets and stuff. I don't give a lot of hope for that. You might you might get a long range radio and stuff, but the, the way to think of it, I think, is not think of it in in that kind of way, is you can uh, think of it as old school communications. There's a lot of benefit to going old school and rustic. And so the, Bin Laden and these guys did it when they were on the run. But mm -hmm. you, you, can, you can do more in letters and old school snail mail things and just communications. You see, you see the basic premise is that you don't have to be that literal. You, is is if you know a year down the road after the you know 
communications are really busted up or completely compromised, I'm pretty sure I could look at something or something and I could say, I know that. That's probably Kevin. I can see his thing. But anyway, I would instantly know that we're comrades and basically I would respond in kind. So you get this meta uh, analysis that kind of over the literalist heads and the, the, the current Vogons in the military establishment, they're very linear thinkers. And the idea that you could have just, you know, an understanding that is a meta layer of communication above everything they're doing is quite beyond them because they, they you know, have a hierarchy and their communication systems are top down and they haven't got any clue about a lateral mesh network that can actually communicate laterally almost by telepathy. So you, I wouldn't say you get too into those, those things. Those, those will evolve as time goes on because it's very easy to recognize a compatriot across the room. Secret handshakes more like than, than connection by mm. radios. So um, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd definitely say that. There, there was uh, something else that I wanted to say. What was your, your previous point um, before communication? Um, uh, the well, the fact that people people are well, they they're. Moving as a as a unit because of the ability to pass in pass this information so quickly. Oh, oh and, now, now on your project now yeah, with something yeah. like eco health and what you're exposing, I'm thinking uh, more. But in, just, in the just the yeah. but so right now the networks that we have are encompassing all this uh, cyber domain and the uh, uh, and the in the inherent weaknesses of these interconnected systems and the fact that they've been backdoored. This is this is part of the uh, discussion all the time uh, as as to why we're seeing the situations that we that we are, how we're seeing the pivot uh, with geopolitics um, and you know what might have been the best laid plans of mice and men which was you know the Pan-Eurasian super state, the the Belt and Road Initiative. That's actually uh, in the last few months. It's because it's becoming starting to fall apart. Australia has said no. Um, people have become wise to the fact that um, Microsoft Israel ha has backdoored everything and all the systems that we're reliant on, and um, we're strategically weak because we're reliant on a few key foundries with respect to the manufacture of chips i mean it's and but th th that's a that's a common topic of discussion but i would i would add this um the military hardware doesn't require the latest amd or um, oh, oh, they are averse to it because basically they, they they're risk averse so i've i've worked on systems in one of the companies you mentioned that was a legacy system that was out of date for 11 years. The, the DOD paid for its maintenance, millions and millions for its maintenance, just because they, they didn't want the newer versions. The military mm -hmm. doesn't like the newer versions, but A, because they, they probably compromise and mm -hmm. they take a long time to, to decide. That. This is the reason why the military infrastructure in the, the missile ICBM complex is is really from the 70s and they maintain yeah. the hardware and the software from the 70s and you say well yeah. don't you want the cutting edge no they they no. Were, it's they designed to be very very retrograde yeah. Yeah. And, and and actually rebels should also think in that in terms of that's why i say in terms of snail mail and don't you know, the 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 high end is is the the battleground in terms of security and uh you know, uh, really resilient communications, you've got to think in terms of really rustic and really yeah. um, unsophisticated. Yeah, and so try I, to... I would, um, like I say, I, you know, there are some things that you can control and you, you know, there's the premise that you hope you've got the wisdom to understand what you can and you can't uh, control. And um, the, the, the discussion revolves uh, we, we, around we have no narrative of control. So our, our whole thing, our whole stick is that you don't have any control. Well, so, I, I, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to sort of uh, disagree with that because I can control influence. my household. No, no, I can control it. But 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 can you? I mean, can you? How much of your household can you control? You you you've got your time allocated. 
I mean, if you might be in special circumstance, but for the average Joe, they, they're controlled like a slave. They have to work more than nine to five every day. They're controlled by the taxes. They're controlled by the phone. They're controlled by the, the social structures. It, it's, there's almost no autonomy. So all, all you can do where you do have uh, some choice is non-compliance. But then you have to have, do it artfully because you can't be seen to be, you know, go up against the system and take it on, uh, you know, with a frontal assault. You've basically got to be underground and very stealthy. But it, it, it's more an emerging people of like mind, like like us. So we, you know, I'm talking about your group and our group. It's basically, you know, for the, for the base thing is we, we want humanity to survive. And these people yeah. are not human. These people are of transhuman. They're the scum of the earth. And if if the world sticks with them, they're dead. So we're trying to basically have life and make sure we have progeny. And basically on that one, I, I would introduce this because I wouldn't give much time to wokeism because I don't I don't see, it's, it hasn't got much future because the future I see is really tough and they're, they're no nobody's woke in a foxhole. So no. basically, <laughs> it's, it's basically a first world problem. Wokeism is a yeah. first world problem that has no legs. It's very very privileged and it's the kind of you know problem you get it, with it, it, privilege. So you can just ignore it because those guys have no, it, no, it, no it's the fact of, it's the factor it's one of the factors that causes the implosion and the acceleration. We, we want the pro implosion. Well, it, it, yes, so that means passive resistance to their programs because they want they want to subsume all into their identity uh politics and their their critical race theories or uh, identitarian uh ideas and like i say the non-compliance to it and this is this is where i've pleaded with people right if and thankfully i'm, I'm not in that situation I, i've really uh you know thank thank the good lord that uh he's, he's put me in a position where i don't have to worry about my kids being subverted by the school right um and you know i'm comfortable in that they're going away and they're having a classic education as i understood it right it, it very much reminds me of britain in the 70s and 80s with respect to schools here um and so it's just normal subjects and um the the, the in in the east they don't have the issue with the, the identity groups as it's not subverted the reason you have them in the west is because you've allowed these groups to uh, gain a foothold they've marched through the institutions uh, following gramps's uh roadmap and much, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and and but, but the, here the you are is, this is the thing about communists is they creep and creep and creep and creep for decades and they get knocked into six they get knocked out of touch in about a minute so so the, the communists are, are very long range, creepy kind of, they have this Chinese view as well. But mm. but they, they get rolled back in a month. So they get 20 years of work can be rolled back in a month for them. Which is why they're so insistent. I don't think it's worth worrying about them. Well, but there's this, you want to make sure, so if we, if we, the idea and the premise is to get as many people through, as you called it, the bottleneck. Right. Um, you want to make sure that your uh, your young are as subversive, free as possible. Okay, and this is this is why in the in the West there's such an issue with the schools. Um, I'm I'm an advocate for a healthy nationalism. That uh, you know, learn learn your history, learn the. Um, the culture, you, you know. I mean, I'm it's sound hypocritical because I'm in another, I'm in another country. But I don't, I haven't come here and tried to turn Japan into a little corner of England. I've, I'm everything is uh, it, it's it, it's it's set up. Well, you don't need to. It's so English anyway. Island nations are very similar. Yeah, and you know that I felt that straight away that. Um, uh, there's, there's UK, a great, you, you would probably get a lot, big bang out of reading Lawrence van der Post. So Lawrence van der Post is a South African writer who was very associated with Jung, and he was um, a, a Japanophile. And uh, he waxes lyrical about the 
you know, the similarities between Britain and, and Japan, which he found really extraordinary in the mindset. Mm. Yeah, and I'm, and I'm telling you, if if they hadn't opened the floodgates to immigration in the UK, uh, the UK would be very much like Japan, ordered yeah, society, they're, they're... clean, uh, n not as fractured, and you know there was a very very specific um, program of subversion to uh, uh, to deconstruct the idea of love of country in in the population right and um a a strong nationalism is the it's one of the bigger roadblocks that the globalist system has to has to contend with and actually it's manifested uh mo most freely in the united states because th there is this inculcation in you're in the best country in the world that you know the american system etc is the one that brings brings about uh excellence and yeah you know, of course it has its issues as well but this is this is where i like i say i think the key battleground would be uh the uh, in the united states there's going to be like i say you've seen the the population is split already they did it in a in a few months which is going down the pathway of the uh, the, the gene therapies and then the therapies for SARS-CoV-2 and that's that's going to be the discussion and literally that's going to you've got now uh, a seven month window in which that's going to work itself out and at the end of that seven months um, you probably you, you could be in a state of complete anarchy because of the oh, careful careful anarchy's order to us <laughs> so but it, chaos it, you it, mean complete chaos chaos, chaos yes and um it's and that could be right. and that could be because of the potential risks from the current round of therapy that's gone on and the booster shots that they've given they're going to give in september october um but it also might be that the other side get backed into a corner that they have to that they've got no other choice but to go down that corporate um line otherwise well, otherwise the vibe will become but here's the thing I, I think we should advance the conversation because to me it seems kind of obvious what what comes next so the if you look on the financial front there's uh we're printing our way into on again so the there's going to be a financial collapse, Weimar Republic style. You can just look at how the inflated currencies in, in France, um, which, you know, after the revolution, it led to Napoleon. It basically leads to dictatorship. It's a one-way trip to a malevolent dictator. It's not necessarily going to be, uh, even if it's on the far right, you can't really tell with these people. I mean, Hitler was a national socialist and, you know, it's, was a socialist <laughs> they say oh oh a socialist in name only no no he was a full-on socialist he just was a national socialist so your program could wind up in a new ideology it could wind up in national socialism so you know personally just personal preference i prefer it to communism because i say i'd rather be shot in the face for who i am than stabbed in the back for what i think and mm. People, you know, on communists have argued with me and say, no, but you can always change what, what you think. You can't change who you are. And I say, no, but the problem is that what you allowed to think changes all the time. What mm -hmm. now, you know, it's very much like living under totalitarian wokeism because you can say like, well, I'm in now because I'm trans or something. And you say, yeah, but uh, what happens if there's some breakaway guy who's like a Trotsky who's trans? then trans people will be public enemy number one and they'll sweep you up and take you and you can't, you know, it's just you can't keep up with the right politically correct thinking is the problem in those total. So they become a psychological nightmare. It's like living in a massive psychological torture chamber. So that's why I don't like them. But the, the, if we move ahead to this environment, that basically it's, you must think of it more in terms of a wartime footing where mm. there's a financial collapse. Um, I, I, I can see a very easy way to handle unrest on the streets. The traditional way is to just start a, an intense ground war and to mobilize people and have a draft. It's a way you can get all the young hot bloods off the street. It's a very easy way of doing it. So, I mean, if, if they get the opportunity to have a proxy war in somewhere like Iran and stuff, you can expect they will draft. I've warned my kids 
that basically get you know prepared for a draft and have avenues and i would say that to anybody that's of military serving age uh, and basically as the war goes south the age of recruitment goes up and up and up and by the time you eventually get to guys like me you're at the final stages of the war so but, but uh so think in terms of the long haul and think in terms of like if there is um uh, a wartime footing, which essentially we are on a wartime footing. We have a command economy. There's no price discovery. The markets essentially have been suspended just because they've been controlled. Uh, the gold and silver markets are being controlled. You're seeing a wartime economy. The manufacturing is basically done by dictat far more than market forces. So we are in a wartime footing already. Now, in that environment, you can forget about things like communism and wokeism because they they won't survive or in other words you can't influence them in uh propaganda style military uh and and assume martial law is chucked in there somewhere so okay. so all of those things will would disappear just just be like fog in the in the morning when the sun comes out so i i don't think you should waste any time on that it's just we, we're already so far advanced in this just start thinking that we're in the you know 1939 come you know, the end of the phony. Essentially, we're in the phony war now. So you're just yeah. waiting for the hot war to start. And so so it's very, very important to pick the battles. And a wokeism and communism is, is not one of them. We're all up against totalitarian transhumanism. So transsexuals are just confused over privileged kids, as far as I can tell. They're all, you know, trans, trans trans Yeah, I mean, look, the, what they are is the mechanism of subversion to bring us to that point where there's that collapse so you know there's i'm but, but again we want it we want to advance this, this agenda right? this, this, this there's a very nuanced conversation that you need to have around um the the concept of acceleration right or accelerationism um you want to be in control or not in, not in control you want to be able to in when that accelerationism starts you need to be able to uh adapt yourself position yourself and and get through it what the nature yeah, of it is in the current circumstances yeah you basically have to think like a surfer and you have to position yourself for the wave so that basically you can ride it but you can't yeah. control the wave you, you know you see it's it's very bad to think you can you can predict the wave or shape it because hmm. like it. i say we don't know we don't know the elements of uh, tech, the, the, the technology that's going to be used. We've got some idea with respect to the tracking, and we've also got some idea that most people are just going to uh, lap it up anyway because it's a shiny new gadget. And you know, the, the, it, the, these things are already here. A lot of this is um, all this idea of this uh, smart city f uh, future, etc. You're already in it. Right. This is what this is what a lot of people haven't realized. And it's it's a small adjustment with respect to the technology to um, bring about the next stage of the uh, the automated revolution and the the uh, the bio, the biology, uh, biological gold rush, which is what's going to happen. And I would argue that the uh, the premise of the therapies to these uh it's, it's dual use agents they've released dual use agents this is another aspect that you have to take into your thinking that they've pulled the pin on the on the bio warfare grenade yeah. right and it doesn't doesn't matter we haven't even got into crispr and the gene drive and stuff like that mm. but I, I think we can see the the shape of the techno dystopia i mean mm. it, it's I, I would chuck in geoengineering stuff is coming yeah, but, I mean, the, the, all the, all these technologies are extant. They're being like weather modification is the norm, um, fracking is the the norm. It just depends on where, um, what's cheapest at the time, right? So the U.S. is pivoting from fracking back to trying to get oil from the Middle East. I think it's a stupid mistake, um, but you know that's the it's, that's, it's, it's the finance. You you can't yeah. if uh, fracking was already the EROI is just yeah. atrocious, so they, they can't keep keep that up anymore. But but the 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 indications for for war are very very strong, and uh, what a lot of people missed was in before 2018 there was a big rush. I mean I'm talking about 1.5 million 
um, requests for background checks for secret uh, status clearance. In the US, it took them a, a, about 18 months to clear the backlog. Now, the, the only reason I can see for a massive increase in the number of security clearances is a preparation for war. So my assumption is since about 2017 or 2016, they've been prepping for war, it looks like. So, so, so we must see ourselves in that kind of situation. And then it, I think it's important to say how we surf it. And one of the things I think is important is the funding is basically how uh, an underground community and stuff funds itself. And so I got a lot of ideas on that. And uh, and so maybe we should discuss that if you're interested in. But the funding is crucial because you have to, you know, basically use the shekels in the system. Uh, so when in Rome, you know, do as the Romans, and the Romans insist on some form of currency to survive. So you you have to have. I, I'm not in agreement with parallel polis and parallel communities, but parallel currencies. I think are, are essential. And you can see that in any, you know, there's a secret underground. I don't know if you know, there's a secret underground in, in drachma in Greece, even though they have the Euro, because all the drug money and stuff is all <laughs> done in drachma. So it goes, um, yeah, you can often get uh, in seedier parts of Greece, have some guy saddle up to you in a car park and offer you drachmas for Euros. <laughs> and he's giving you a little uh, in into the dark, uh, the black market. So mm -hmm. basically, a parallel currency like thinking in terms of the mafia using drachmas is is, is yeah, very important. And of course, it, I hope it goes without saying that, you know, basically, all these blockchain technologies inside of an NSA sting operation, I wouldn't go near them. And yeah, I would say, uh, my, my advice would look, man, if you want if you want to give me crypto, brilliant. Thank you very much. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, dollars. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure, sure. sure. Um, but as a, a as a mechanism for transactions and controls and everything, my advice would be to just steer clear of it. Try not to try not to use it. Um, and again, this is the passive uh, passive resistance that's that's coming in with respect to um, the upcoming events. Right? Try to try to try to find ways yeah to try to find ways of trading that are not that are not dependent on the new beast system right yeah. and i i'm not sure what i'm not sure what that is and i would, oh, oh, I would I say I'm, I'm very advanced on that one maybe we should talk about that one next time sure i mean you know my what i see is just barter and trade um yeah. so there was there was never really a barter system barter doesn't really work it's it's everything Adam Smith, David Ricardo, and all those early economists, uh, they were all full of shit. They just made up that story about first there was barter and then me money was a means of exchange because you didn't have reciprocal exchange. It's all horseshit. And anthropologists went to have, actually have a look at it. There isn't a single example in the anthropological record that says that people were bartering. What everybody's used all over is the system that Smith and Ricardo thought was a new innovation, and that's dead. All indigenous people have a, what's called in Arab countries a wasta system. It basically means I have influence or I have, he owes me one. So it's all a he owes me one system. It's all informal communities have uh, really, they operate in the realm of a Dunbar number, and everybody is just a favor system. So a favor system works, a barter system is horseshit. But a barter system, why a barter system never happened is, you only have to barter with a stranger. And indigenous people didn't often meet strangers. So, so yeah. So this is yeah. this is. I, I think this is just a semantic issue because, like you say, you're talking about a, a number, a tribal number, and um, you're, that only one uh, idea is. I would just say that's you going up and say, "Can I borrow your shovel?" Right. And no, it's can I say, can I can I have the money to pay for my poll tax? But you know, but um, these uh, before before you start thinking, in my, if I was to just start putting energy and thought into trying to think of this system, what you need to what you need to be able to do is to find a functional way to keep 
the tribe together that makes up the, the you know the, your Dunbar. Oh, I have better than that. I have a way of extending the tribe too. But, but you still, you still need. To, you, you, there are physical goods that need to move, right? So before thinking about money and currency, the first thing you got to think about is well, how do we eat, right? And how do we how do we uh, pay bills, uh, or, or you know how do we get firewood? How do we uh, get water how do we eat and build up from there and um that in my mind is a case of yeah you're going to your neighbor someone you know and you build that relationship and um you help each other so if one's got if one's got the cow can provide the milk and the other's got chickens oh, and can provide that, the eggs very late stage right so so you've got to think of it in terms of the stages and move with the stages so you have to have something that that works on digital and cell phones and everything that the kids are used to now. And then basically that's, that's one stage. But my personal opinion is the grid will stay up very long because the, I mean, the internet, the grid is uh, going to be spotty, but uh, the internet itself will stay up and cell phone network is, will stay up uh, the GPS system, the AIS, they, all of these systems, they will stay up for a long time. And the reason is they're military strategic. They like the, the highway infrastructure in the States. It wasn't really built for people to get their gas guzzlers and go on Route 66. It was built uh, as a nuclear defense for strategic uh, mm. movement, particularly of big convoys. And you'll find lots of straight pieces. In, and what those straight pieces are is uh, runways, the alternative mm. Uh, runways for, for landing aircraft. So the idea was to, through redundancy, to have these large strips of freeway and they, they to, to move uh, strategic materials around and they, they for, for run, uh, secret runways. But, it, but anyway, the internet is much like that and the GPS system is like that. The problem is that, uh, and the cell phone, the problem is they will restrict civilian use of it. Mm. So you, so at first, when you think of, you know, first it's all like it is now. It's open and you have free access to it as a, as a civilian. Uh, you have to think that those will be tightened up. They will start to scrutinize the use that you have of the Internet um, and, and license the use of the Internet um, and shape the flows and stuff like that. And, but but uh, the next stage after that, is where you have informal currencies and things like that, particularly gold and silver and that whole landscape of, of physical real money. And mm -hmm. then finally, when the system collapses entirely, you get onto more proper systems where, where communities behave in a tribal manner. But I think you have to you know, prepare for that arc of, of collapse. And the good news is that we both see things in terms of collapse. So it's kind of easy to have this conversation. Um yeah but i would i would be i don't want to be too pessimistic right i i don't human beings have been here before um many many times and i'm i, I think we'll be surprised at our capacity to adapt maybe uh, I'm, I'm maybe but i think it's it's not a good mindset to instill in the troops you, you want to put them on dead ground right on so, what Sun Chu calls dead ground. You just basically do the old Roman trick where you burn the bridges so the guys have to fight to the death. You, you, it's, you don't really want to encourage the troops, especially hope is really poisonous, especially in this like, big labor camp. This labor camp is kept alive by hope. So our first task is to make everybody lose hope. Uh, well, I don't, I don't think uh, we have to do anything with that respect. Let's say it's, well, well, it's, it's an uh, influencer. You, you're an influencer, right? You just you just look at the like I say the brilliant example was the magnetism from the uh, from the shots that will turn a, a, a significant proportion already of of the people that went with the program okay um but literally because most of them just won't understand the mechanistic reason behind them they they'll just understand magnets magnets stick to me now. Right. So um, in their mind, and like I say, I'm I'm of the opinion I'm not concerned about the the masses per se. Right. And right. that's why I, 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 to yeah. Yeah. I, I don't tailor my message to. To speak to tens of thousands, I speak to I, I tailor it to speak to hundreds. 
because if you're trying to speak to such a, a, a large number, what happens is you're always forced to um, pander to your, your speech in some way that, yeah, that, yeah. that moves you further away from being able to uh, respond rapidly to uh, events on the, on the ground. As, and as and they also have. funding. So, so you you become basically a plaything of the funders if you're not careful. Mm. Yeah, and and you you get uh, addicted to the uh, the numbers that are, that the patreons that you're yeah. getting, and that, yeah, yeah. Ev every, everything everything yeah. becomes a trap. And then and then essentially you just become a useless node in that network that's feeding yeah. uh, yes, that's so. feeding bad information and yeah. it's been my determination from the beginning to make sure that what we're doing is used, is taking a scientific approach to um appraise the information as as we're getting it and you know i'm i'm convinced that the like i say i'll come back I'll, I'll come back to our ability to crack their narrative around the oh, yeah. uh, around the lab like, hey hey big bush um the uh yeah good boy come on switch everything off it's time for bed okay um the i forgot what i was saying now kids uh, basically shaping the narrative yes yes so um i'm not going to hold back um, opinions that some people are going to clutch pearls at, right? I'd, and there's a reason that people are sticking around and listening to me is that I'll I'll take my, uh, you know, the, pro the professional and scientific weight, what little there is, but it that there is some, and I'll throw it into the fight. And um, oh yeah, you know. I, I personally, Kevin, I think your legs are a lot longer than that. I think that basically you have a lot of charisma and you certainly have the ability to lead quite a large group, maybe a, an army. But the, the but the uh, I think, yeah, I mean, I think we think exactly the same. I, the way we think of it is just do right action. We don't look for any outcomes or any great world-changing things. In fact, we try and encourage that as kind of anathema. Any kind of utopian thinking is 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 not. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I avoid that. I avoid that like the plague. And this is this yeah. is this so is what too. I try. Yeah. I, yeah. I try to I try to instill to people, um, get right with your family, make yeah, family. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's um, do, do the right actions. Don't care about the consequences. We don't mm. really know how this goes. And, you know, basically, we all have life experience, and so we we can predict that this goes. Look, this doesn't go well. I can tell you that with absolute certainty. We're not going into any rosy future. Um, basically, they, you, you do yourself a favor and just, you know, anybody listening is just do yourself a favor and realize this is going to be as rough as anything ever, any human being has ever experienced, ever. Mm. Mm. So you, so, I mean, on, on the scale anyway. But but the, the thing is to, you you can't think in terms of we're going to save the planet or we're going to save humanity or save mm. civilization. You just have to say, what, in the circumstances, what's the right thing to do? And you just do the right thing and don't care about the consequences. You just take mm. personal responsibility for doing the right thing. Now, when somebody of your stature does does that, they're liable to go and acquire a big a number of people. The, the way I see it is that the use of that is shaping an alternative narrative. So, so every, what... The big flaw on the establishment elite transhuman side is they have a very, very shitty narrative. It's it's pedestrian, it's uninspiring, it's the most quotidian nonsense known to man. The real reason why Klaus Schwab will never get anywhere, why EcoHealth and why Bill Gates and Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and all these NGOs and billionaires like Musk is, the, the, the best story of them all is Musk's. And it's a shit story. I mean, it, it's it's like well, we all go to the stars and we all go to Mars, and it's like, and then what? It's like it's who wants to live on Mars? It's fucking a death trip. These guys are <laughs> fucking death ride. So so basically, they now the left thinks that they have no story. No, we've got a fantastic story. 
we're fighting for life on this planet. There couldn't be anything more romantic or heroic. Yeah. You can yeah. find the narrative and meaning to life. It, it's just handed to us on a fucking plate. You have these death-seeking digital transhumanists that are trying to kill the world and market it. Yeah. And basically you have these people on life and the environment, kids, progeny and stuff. We're fighting for life. It's like, yeah. there's the fucking play of your yeah. lifetime. That's yeah, the narrative of a lifetime. It's the... So, so and it's that's you your heroes. Right it's the hero's archetype. It's right? the archetype. It's straight yeah. a, a, in terms of archetypes, we've already won hands down. Mm. <laughs> and so I'm, um, you, know, you take each day as it comes. So like I say, I, when I set out doing speaking publicly in this manner, you know, the idea was just to try to disambiguate the science because there were obvious flaws in it. We've, we've demonstrated that now, and by by being able to demonstrate that, I would say that's probably show me something that's as efficacious as that in a shorter time and it has an impact. And you're just going to beginning to start seeing the impact right now because these uh, because other people which didn't have a spine at the beginning are going to try and move into that space. And now there's going to be a struggle between those of us that did try to bring it to the the public consciousness and those that are going to try and move in and uh, control the narrative for their, uh, their their greater good but the thing is those people are hooked into that system right and it's uh, it's so, so here's, <laughs> here's what I'd say at this stage is is you know just so props to you man and and, and all your group what you've achieved is just fucking wonderful and certainly in the amount of time. So, but here's my warning after this, is don't get target fixation, right? You're bigger than EcoHealth, Dayzac, and you're even bigger than the medical thing. So, so your medical thing is just your entry into the fight. But, mm. but don't push it too far, right? Because, because there's, there's only a limited, I mean, high impact, but you can't win the war with this one thing. It's just a battle. So it's very nice. important to, to say, okay, we won that battle. And disengage because you you cannot follow the life of this story. This life story of of what you've exposed is going to get messy. People are going to try and exploit it. There's going to be counter arguments. It's going to turn into a, really a big heap of entropy that nobody can track. I wouldn't want to see you go down in that entropy. I don't want to see you do the the guy that that is is you know basically your identity is wrapped around this because i think you're better than this sorry. and you could, you could... I just uh, just unplugged my uh... sorry my so, so head so fight I, I think personally you you're bigger than this and you can fight bigger battles it would be really sorry to be you know people that can make a, a small victory then you know the it's it's you know the Hegelian thing, where you have synthesis and antithesis, and then mm. you're supposed to arrive at some uh, some kind of synthesis or, or thesis and antithesis, and then you get the synthesis, and it goes on and on in this pointless fucking dialogue, which pre pretty much amounts to deadlock. And deadlock, and you 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 have the potential to go go down wrestling with a pig. What, oh, yeah, what but, I uh, so, you so, say is draw my, back from the pig and take take your take your winning and run. It's a very it's a very old failing. Um, in in rebels to to linger too long after a victory or to try to push a, a small victory too far, but basically think of it as a hit and run and 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 think of yourself as as much bigger than even the healthcare front, right? Yeah, and um, well, that's why that's why I do take the time to speak to the social issues. I know I know it's a uh, my view is. Uh, it's going to cause a lot of friction for especially on certain demographics and political views. But, uh, you know, I think there's, um, I, I like to think mine is more sort of family grounded and orientated and, uh, and as an antidote to the subversion that, that is buckling everything right now. It's why, like I said, if you want, you want to, you want to, understand why the west is so fragile right now is because they atomize families and they they split them up oh, everything the, yeah, atomized yeah. Them. it was it and, was it was a plan after it was population control after world war ii yeah. 
Yeah, and I can tell you the history of all of that if you want. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, it's it's fascinating, and I'd I'd encourage everyone just to just to get into understanding the the well psyop that is. Well, yeah, but, but, yeah, depending but, but on take, which country take your lead you in you the style, bro. take your lead in the side. Not not so much in in terms of drastic and in, in this one thing, because I mean, okay, I, I think you'd agree that you know this uh, SARS-CoV-2 and all its family are here forever. They're not. Mm. They're going to become it's endemic endemic. now. It's and endemic now. already, right? Mm -hmm. so it's basically, we just got to live with it. So mm. so you know, it's. It, People will have amnesia pretty shortly. They'll they'll adapt and learn to live with it and just take um, take the casualties, but carry on um, just under more reduced circumstances with more pain and misery in the world. So, so you at some stage you're going to have to switch, right? You you personally are, are going to have to um, step beyond that and go go on to the next thing. Yeah, and look, this uh, this is what I say to everyone that listens to me. You can, but right now, you can only engage what comes on over the horizon to us. And right now, we're in the middle of this scientific dialogue, and um, that's what we're having to deal with. That and, and, will and change. And you're making your chops. You're making your chops on that, and you're building up kudos. But mm. but but I urge you to start thinking of what what comes next because don't mm. don't. I mean. Can I ask a personal question? I mean, don't answer it if you if you don't want to. But but how much how much time do you think you've got? Uh, before it gets in, you know. Well, no, I mean personally, your medical history and stuff. Oh, me, twenty years. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so, so you're not you're not on the short haul, or you, you, you know you. You're not doing a parting shot or anything like that. No, no. Okay. But okay. So, um, so, well, if I get forty, so I it would be. But I, I mean, I don't give myself twenty years, and I'm in perfect health. So it's like, uh, sometimes I wonder if I'm going to make twenty weeks. But the but uh, anyway, the, the the point I'm trying to make: if, if you think of a twenty-year horizon, uh, okay. So then, how how much hay can you make out of this pandemic? Um, I don't know. A couple more my years. own person, my own personal goal. If I can reach a point where um, I can wind back the the atomization that's been done, and my model would be from the Italian side of my family, which is to aim for extended family living right next to each other, and that's our unit. Right, and so that's why I'm in Greece. So it's basically mm. you need social cohesion to get through this. Mm. But, but um, on, you, you've completely failed your side. It's basically you know you you've first of all you you turned out not to be a Christian. You were a Gnostic heretic, which we give you two thumbs up for. <laughs> and then you turned out to be an anarcho primitivist. <laughs> Another two thumbs. And now, now you turn out to be a mutualist. <laughs> it's like you keep on going like that. You have to basically take out a black flag. Um, no, it's because at the, at the end of the day, um, I'm I try to make the arguments against ideologues. Right? Do not, do not. Okay, you you remember now? That's it. You you you're a gold standard member. <laughs> it's like you don't have to say anymore. You're uh, no flags. You're a founding, yeah. You're a founding member, <laughs> and you know that. And if you can instill that in others, okay. And that look, this up, this operates across multiple dimensions, and um, critical. Th th there are critical components to human existence. Okay, you've got to find the basics. You need to you need to keep warm and cool, and you need to eat. But after that comes there's a there's the existential and spiritual component that yeah, you need to use. Maslow's hierarchy, right? Uh, yes, yeah. I mean, it's it's it's. I I find that actually a very good um, heuristic to use with people. That you need you need to work up a scale, up a hierarchy towards self actualization, and you know, with at different stages in your life come different points of self-actualization with the maturation and the growth of your brain and personality. And as a as we atomized societies and culture, we we 
we took away some elements of the uh, the group aspect or the tribal aspect of that because it was turned inwards to a, to a form of um, selfishness, right? And and uh, instant gratification, and that's that's a lot of how the capitalist system was has exploded so well and it, yeah, it does it brilliantly yeah individualism like mm. Mm. And, and and it does it brilliantly and there are aspects of it that are um highly uh, they're, they're the pinnacle of thinking of uh of great minds right that we understand that the sovereignty of individual of the individual is something sacred but that sacred individual if they if they can build a healthy and it's it's your family it's your family that you have around you and you build from there and then they make friends with the people i don't know you might make enemies down the road it doesn't matter it's still it's still some community that you you're you're working with and that would be my goal to go towards that if i the further i could get into the japanese countryside and um the older my boys get and i can put them to work instead of me um i i would have that and then i would encourage my children because of what's happened with my family i'm thousands of miles away from my family and under the current circumstances i'll never see them again yeah i'm, I'm in the same position so the the same position with my kids is that it's very hard to see well i mean they might come out on the yacht this year, but the, the financial circumstances and stuff is moving so fast that, but I, I mean, I, I told them in 2018 kind of my view of what's coming and they, they tracking to that. And part of that is, is, is not a hopeful view at all. I'm a complete doomer. Um, mm -hmm. But what the, the flip side of that is, is that my kids are living their life. They're living their life. Uh, so, so my both uh, because I'm such a rebel, my kids reacted to become goody two shoes. So I, I all you know in America, everybody asked me, well, "How do you have such good kids?" And I said, "I tried to make them bad. I failed." <laughs> and basically, you know, kids always turn out the opposite you want. So, well, so, uh, I, I'm, that's a bit of a trope, and um, I, I. I think yeah, true, yeah, true. But I mean, in, 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 in essence, but, but but the thing is now that because they not very adventurous, they they've been remarkably adventurous. My son went to um, Hong Kong just uh, during the 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 rights as an exchange student, and and got involved in those rights. I posted bits of uh, on Reddit, and I was so proud of him because he, uh, you know, I, I said to everybody in America said, "Don't go; it's dangerous." And I said, go. I said, A, you will learn to read situations of unrest and you'd basically learn how to how to enjoy them and basically stay out of trouble. Um, and I said, you know, you can, they're not dangerous because when you learn to read the situation. But I said, go, because what's happening in Hong Kong now is, is was coming to the States. So he went and he had the fantastic time. I couldn't, I... My proudest moment was um, him. He said, he's not a brave kid, right? And he, he, he told me, Dad, I had a fantastic thing today. He said, I, I was walking with all my student buddies um, across this bridge, and there was this police brigade, riot police. And they, they, uh, one of the kids I was with, he like shouted and gave them the finger, and the, the, the whole basically police line charged them. And he said, you know, I was just walking along there minding my own business with a slurpee and we had to like scatter and i had to run for my life down these stairs and he says he says dad those guys better watch their step man if they carry on doing shit like that a guy could drop his slurpee <laughs> and i was like oh you're my son man so it was like yeah but what my doomism has turned them into they living life uh totally my, my daughter is going to drop out of college now because and I'm encouraging her to. So I say, mm. there, there is no future in this bullshit. In, uh, in oh, yeah. Look, the systems of the systems are run. Unless, yeah. unless you unless you're on an inside track in the STEM field where you're gonna get, you know, somewhere yeah. beyond uh, but, uh, a bench monkey. Yeah. Um, she's racking up debt. She's racking up yeah. student debt, and she said she's earned enough money to pay off her debt and go with her boyfriend on an adventure. I said, do the adventure. 
Mm. Just, the old program comes from the 50s and it's doomed. The idea you go to college and you work your way, get a piece of paper and a guaranteed job, it's gone. You will we'll never see those days again. So, so start moving on to living your best life. And that's it's not what you say, but I've got the same experience with my kids who have become very conformist because I led a life that wasn't, even though I was a, a doctor and I was, you know, doing the, the job in the community. But but I still see, like I told you, my son went to sea very young in wild wild mornings on the Atlantic, fishing on small boats and got got very early through the elements. So he did get his, his um, lesson in life, but still very conformist. He doesn't want to hear what I'm telling him about the, the collapse of the system. And my daughter's the same. But as you, as you, Kevin, I are kind of happy to be not far from them. They're within an hour mm. of me by car and walking. It would maybe half a day or by horse. It would be, but, you know, so we, we're not far from each other. And uh, it's, it's uh, I'm not sure. I'll, I'm not sure. I'll, I have a base here, a good base with a good social co cohesion. You see what I told you there? I'm here with you and somebody walks into my house. That's that's the way people live here. Walks in, sits down, puts on the kettle, and it's been like that for since forever. So it I'm in a good I'm in a good place for community, but at the same time, at the same time, who knows? Because things move so fast. Things are going so, so fast at the moment. Yeah. Mm. Choose your tribe. Choose your friends. The, 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 the thing is, though, it's, it comes in circles, right? So, so you can you can have your inner tribe and then rings of outer ones. Yeah. Uh, and our tribe exactly. here online is a, is a loose network. We um, have a good tribe. Like-minded <laughs> individuals, right? So. And look, what what does that do? It it it's passing information. It's all information right now, and and responding to it. You know, it's. Um, well, a bit of wisdom, because you see, because we're older, the the younger kids are of surprisingly uninformed. Right? They, see, one of the things all this atomization has done is taken away some of the structures that you need to survive. It's taken away some of the, the storytelling, the the story yeah. But they've they've denuded this. They cut bare. By the time you get to TikTok, there's nothing left of the social fabric, mm. and so the what it's left the kids is bewildered so so a lot of the reason why they can't face the coming collapse or even stare it in the eye is because they have no narrative to fall back on they have no hero narrative they don't i'm sure coming we real the same vintage and we we have you know battle of britain comics and we read the, the beano and we've got we've got this narrative of how you're supposed to behave in the world war ii and it's it's gone. There's a vacuum. There's a big hole where the, where that is that's been filled in with wokeism and bullshit. And yeah, but you, you, no you're into the paradigm of uh, so um, strong men make good times. Good times make weak men. Weak men make bad times, and then the bad times make strong men again. And um, you're just well, in that transition. Wrote that end of that, to that story. <laughs> and you're just you you're in that transition right now. I'm. I, I literally pray that it's not so bloody that um, you know the carnage is as minimal as possible. And like oh, I say, you, know, I, you know, it's a genocide. The, 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 this planet only supports about five hundred million people at most. Nah, I, I don't. I don't. I think the, the pop, I think the population bottleneck is going to be so bad. They, they, they. This is a. It's Malthusian thinking. Right. Yeah, yeah. And, mm -hmm. It's true. <laughs> and look, I was I was just reading something yesterday. Uh, I don't know. Maybe someone put it in the Discord. But you know, this vertical farming, and um, it produced more crops on. I think it was like something seven hundred square feet than several acres of uh, normal um, farming land. This sort of Custom yeah, all, all, all this thing is, is coming, but it's you see, it's all garbage. All, all these things like hydroponics and stuff, they they all based on false premises and false accounting. So if, if you if you scrap the techno utopian off, it's 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 just a bit of gloss. 
and then you look underneath, it's all horseshit. They see they need nutrients that need to be mined. There's no water for them. This is no, nobody's going to use all these techno fixes. This, this is the enemy narrative. This, this is that we can, yeah, we can techno fix our yeah, way out. I, of this I can I can look I can look out my window, right, and there's an old lady that farms a patch of soil down where I she, I don't know. She must be in her eighties or nineties, right, and it's a big patch of land for japan and she's got stuff coming out of that all the time yeah right? but and it's, you it's, it's all, fertilizer right there's no, no it's, it's all but, it's all natural from um the rice husks and uh there's the yeah yeah but boy, you, you see the, okay let's go through this the kind of thing mm. then follow the rice husk in a famine where those rice i'm telling you her gardens could put but, but, I, don't think, but, I don't think gardens gardens work all the time, right? No, they're, she, they're not she, magic. They're not cornucopia. You basically get in what you get out, what you put in. This is, yeah, this but, is part but of the she's, narrative of all this this uh, permaculture. Do, stuff. Like, people say, people it. think it's magic. But I'm basically, you the soil and you just take it. No, you, you're mining the soil with a plant. <laughs> which, right. which we've always done. Which no, we've but, always yeah, done. Oh, no, hang on a minute. We've done it out of an intact ecosystem that works yeah. because of feedback loops. This is a one-way system. You basically killed an area of soil. What that woman has done is killed a bit of ecosystem and she's growing stuff in the corpse of it. No, you know, not once all the nutrients are gone, her yeah. garden's over. No, no, I'm a gardener and I grow things. I mean, for 30 years I've grown my spuds and my, I'm, a, I'm an old lady growing her stuff on a little patch and I don't kill my little, I, I go, yeah. but break my back carrying seaweed from the beach put it down on the ground but get an with the shovel and get behind the donkeys and the cows down below i i put that in my com in my compost which is basically grass and i make those mounds i put the spots on top dig a bit on top don't kid i actually when i dig a little bit i'm i i even saving the lives of of, of worms in the because i don't like to so and i get enough to feed my little stomach for out of nothing without doing what Lier is describing. But, but, I know as but, agriculture but, is a story. But, but but you can, you're, you can you're missing yourself. the point. You're missing the point. You have those inputs. You have cow dung and seaweed and those those basically you, you need, you need look even hydroponics, you need phosphorus. There's no phosphorus. When the system collapses, you don't have phosphorus. Where you where you mine phosphorus in Tokyo? It's horseshit. Oh, I'm, I'm, talking, I'm not talking about Tokyo. I'm talking about wh where no, I am. No, but, but, but anyway, the, the point is that all this technology is based on, the shore, on I, magical thinking, right? I There's, take shares on the shore and I put them in the... I, I just, you do what you have. You make with what you have. You yeah, know? but but you have a virtually intact ecosystem in Ireland. Yeah. The people in a city do not have the input. I know. Yeah, it's yeah. So, so basically, where do they get their cow dung? So... Hey, are people, oh yeah, yeah. You know all this, this stuff about all these millennials. Yeah, but we've did, actually, we had the, we had this conversation, which was um, as Bolsheviks tried to move in, they tried to rape the countryside to feed the cities, right? And and you, you know what I think is going to happen because we already watched it happen uh, this last year. The cities will empty. People will move out. And the, uh, my hope is that they'll go back towards families, especially. Look, the, half the jobs. The, the, not even half. Ninety percent of the jobs that uh, that a city does are about to be automated away. So you don't even need that city infrastructure anymore. Well, except you could you could turn it into vertical farms because you've got all that real estate there that's not doing anything anymore. Like so, th th this, so I don't. What's the input? to the, the vertical farms where do you get the nitrogen where, where do you get the phosphorus well the, the, the air is the, the, the where the air is uh majority nitrogen the fiber process is something that's um kept us going and i don't see it stopping um oh, there's... Stopping. it's based on uh, it's based on cheap energy the basically yeah, but the, 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 you, you, process you, is effectively ended it's a very high energy process um, but, you know, but we're also walking into this. Look, technology is a double edged sword. OK, and I would I would put forward the premise that um, you're going to see advances in um, the use of the use of energy that becomes more um, uh, more precision in its 
in its delivery. Like I say, uh, uh, my house doesn't have it, but virtually every house around in Japan has solar panels on it, right? And they get and why? Because you know there's there's natural disasters here, and they survive on the on that energy, right? And okay, okay, I got to stop you here. I I live off solar, right? So so mm. basically, my water basically the. the the power you're getting now, okay, I'm attached to shore power. I, I, I have to do it because in the winter there's not enough solar. I live off solar. I couldn't drink water if I didn't have solar. I, I, had, I used to have a wind turbine. I chucked it away. So I, or I gave it away. Uh, I'm telling you, this society does not run on solar. This is coming from a guy. No, but it's, it's, one, it's, one, it's one aspect. But like I say, Japan is doesn't have oil doesn't have coal it imports some it imports oil for running its cars but literally its housing infrastructure is a uh well it's it's very well set up and the, the you know they, they've they've got uh solar they use um they where, use technology where does, where does solar come from uh well you know this is um it's, it's the technology it's the technology china, changes yeah? all the time but okay so it's uh, we, we, in china from from basically uh, so there's a, a mine where 50 percent of its materials come from 50 percent of the world's rare earth minerals come from balta in china it's one fucking mine and basically yeah, but, after uh, we war uh, with china uh japan's solar panels are history well actually but you can look at australia that Australia has virtually all the uh, rare earth minerals that would make up this next generation technology. Not, not neodymium, not cobalt, not uh, yeah, so, not any of the things that, that are required in a solar panel. It's not, but they're not just in China, right? They, these are, uh, these are sure, distributed. Sure, sure. Yeah, by far the majority. There's not enough to... The, there's not enough to do these grand projects like they say, you know, one percent of the Sahara. It, 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 none of these things stand up to scrutiny. It's just nobody. This, gives but it's not. It's not one so percent of the. It's not one percent of the Sahara. It's covering your roof to when more. Okay, I've got a book for you to read. So, so one of the things that we've been doing, and this is this is the. So this is, if I may say so, this is your weak side. Is environmental and climatology is you should. I've read it. I've gone yourself. through it. I've gone through it. Right. Not, not and I don't step. buy. Not, I don't not, buy it. I, I can see it. Not in enough. Mm. If you, if you want us to explain it to you a bit better, but but your knowledge is superficial. I can say that straight out. So so if you, a good book to start with is to start with uh, Derek Jenkins. But, and, look, look, you 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 want you want to tell me right that the the science of uh, the environmentalists is in is in some way predictive of what's coming when we've all, I, I can point to so many elements where it's failed in in its ability to establish itself as a reproducible science. Okay, there's nothing. There's no environmentalism. Yeah, the, the environmental argument, the fact that we're in a, in in these runaway um, feedback loops. I was watching the the I don't know, was it one of uh, I guess from your um, Discord saying watch the guy about the methane feedback loops. I'm like, okay, I watched it. Didn't didn't convince me. Didn't didn't um, in any way uh, change my view with respect to the dynamics of the planet or the earth. Nothing. There's nothing there that I don't think, um, is th that the ecosystems of the earth can't absorb because we know that there's a range of acti a range of, um, not extremes, but the, uh, a, a range of, which which scientist was that was it Beckwith or was it uh do you remember because it's difficult I think it began it began with an m mcculloch maybe something oh, like that, that person, because that's a bit weird. <laughs> but uh, you know it was all about how methane is gonna er erupt from the arctic and um choke us all to death on methane and uh runaway warming okay i've been hearing it for 50 years OK, <laughs> show me a model that they have which has which has come true 
in in any form whatsoever. Uh, so, so it's not in their models. So, okay. So, so why so is it then? What is it? So it, it comes from observational scientists in the Arctic. So when, one of the key players in this is Natalia, uh, Natalia Shakova. Um, yeah, I know. I know her work. I know her work, and I know all about Monda minimums and um, no, all, all these. More, no, no, she's not about Monda minimums. She's about the East Siberian Arctic Shelf. So, so it's basically about the the clathrates and mm. methane venting in the East Siberian mm. Arctic. So, so Igor Shlomelitov is is another scientist. They've just come back from the Arctic um, at the end of last season, um, and they're going to publish a few papers shortly on on the methane. But the methane is definitely venting in the Arctic, and it's, it's so, what? so what? Methane vents everywhere, right? Out, out uh, of no, volcanoes, no, no. out of volcanoes, methane pours along with oh, sulfur no, no. dioxide. Okay, so, and... so, okay, so so the the ESAS is the biggest Arctic, uh, the biggest uh, continental shelf in the world. It's it's about two thousand the size of Europe. Most of it has clathrates. Um, uh, so Great. So, mine them, mine them, and turn them into okay, useful wait, wait, energy. Wait, wait, wait. So, so the they estimate that the they go down fifteen kilometers, fifteen kilometers down in this huge area. The 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 it's th it's it's thousands of gigatons. Mm. Now that entire clathrate, all that body of hydrocarbons, is capped by two meters of permafrost. Mm. That permafrost is melting, and and, I know. and so, it's so venting. what? So 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 what? So and it's so, venting into the atmosphere, and the atmosphere will absorb it, and th there will be changes. Yeah, and the, the, but but the problem is that me methane is is about uh, eighty nine, or it varies as as it's released. It's about two hundred times more potent greenhouse gas than CO two. Yeah, I've, I've, I've heard I've heard all this. Time. I've heard all this. Okay, well, well, okay, to, okay, so I'll, I'll put some numbers on it. A fifty gigaton re release is estimated by the Somalit of uh, uh, Shakova team. Uh, to raise the temperature of the planet 0. 0.6 degrees, so that uh, they expect. So what? So what? So what? I, well, well like, a point. Okay, so wait, wait a minute. A 0. 0.6 degree rise um, turn, turns into very bad news for the Arctic. So the, the Arctic is is raising about four to five times, uh, is warming at four to five times the rate of the average, and in the in the middle of continents, it's the same. You're, you're talking about a 0 0.6 degree rise on average in some places, particularly food baskets, that's a seven degree rise. You're talking mass starvation. There would be mass starvation instantly. But, but, but grow, zone, grow zones will move, okay? This is nothing no, no, new no, for no, the, no, no, no. Nothing where, new where, for the planet. Where, where, the where, planet's been the, much where, warmer. Where, where's, okay, take one grow zone. Take, take the crucial grow zone in America. The bread basket in America is in the San Joaquin Valley. So but all the 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 huge pressure on the plains comes from the Ogallala. They're basically mining the water for the Ogallala mm. aquifer. There's nowhere to move that to, right? You can't move all this to Canada. You see, all this techno techno utopian bullshit that they said, oh, we'll migrate to the. It's, they don't understand horseshit about horseshit. But one of the things is that the soils. You can't just go to the tundra and start planting wheat like all these fuckheads think, is basically it takes on average about 20 years for the soils to develop. Now, you're not going to get Loma Prieta's productive soil in, in the tundra. They've recently done tests on, on how close it is to, you know, the northern latitudes, Canada and northern Russia, how productive they are as farmland. They're 100 years away from producing productive soil. So basically, you, you have to survive 100 years before you grow your first bit of wheat. And anyway, it, it, it would be a runt of, uh, of a thing. It's basically nobody's farming anywhere else. See, what people don't understand is the agricultural land now is saturated. We, we are using the best agriculture. There's nowhere to go to. You don't move from here to grassland. Each one of these ecosystems is surviving on their own niche. So you can't, you can't take the, the niche that we, we you know, basically mine corn on, you can't transfer that to anyway. The planet's full. 
There's there's no vast open areas that oh no, we'll turn those over to wheat. You're not so going to so turn so the, 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 the simple turn it over to wheat. The, the simple the question is, not, is not simple question is where is the uh, geological evidence for these super clathrate releases and mass extinctions? Uh, so they there's. Well, okay, some of the, the recent things have been a negative. They, they, the reason is that they took the samples from the Antarctic. The problem f with these mega releases is that the methane, the CH4, degrades quickly in ultraviolet to CO2. I mean, quickly in geological terms. We're talking, say, a 50 gigaton release would be with us for, you know, on, on a kind of half life of 20 years. But in the geological record, they appear as spikes of CO2. And so it, it confuses a lot of people. But they're, they're in there because basically the, the Azola event cleaned one of them up. So you saw what it appears in the climate record, if you look at it with a clear eye, is that they, you have these tectonic events spew up a lot of uh, CO2 and greenhouse gases into that. Basically, they, they cause a big heating. And then you get these plant events like the Azola event that draws all the CO2 out of the air and then mm. it causes a big freeze again. And then basically you go into the, the sounds, next cycle. Sounds, of the sounds like Earth, Earth cycles to me. Um, yeah, it, it is. It doesn't, it doesn't, yeah, doesn't there, there bother me. There are very big Earth cycles, yeah. But uh, here's, the, here's the problem is... is we, we've been through them as a species. We, we probably went through one of them in the Younger Dryas. Here's the problem. The, the, we had an intact ecosystem, right? Now we have fuck all. Now we've got, now we've got raped soil, by, basically denuded by Monsanto. You, you can't go into a field, an uh, American field now, and reap the corn with your hand. It needs an industrial process to break it down. You it's inedible, the corn out of a field. So no, nobody's going to feed 7.8 billion people uh, if, if you get a uh, 50 gigaton release. We've put right. the, the whole system but, but, into Okay, okay. so, so um, the, the 50 gigaton releases right now that you're talking about, okay? The potential, I, I, yeah. Yeah, potential. I, 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 a potential. I'll, I'll just put it in the same category as pole flips, as you know, mega tsunamis, what, what, meteorite strikes, Okay, it makes little. It makes little difference to how I would plan anything right now well, because well, I, it cool. doesn't. Does I can't change anything. Ah, oh, yeah. But, well, um, okay. First of all, yeah, you should take attention because it's it's a question of complexity, and so we had it. We have so many ex existential threats from so many angles now that you have to eliminate them and say which is the one that gets us. Well, yeah, and I, don't, I, I, don't don't think, I don't think the earth farting is going to be a big deal, right? Because uh, if no, it, well, it causes a cascade. So, so, so my analysis is that that the most the the first potential threat we face is a major venting of those clathrates, and the reason is because we're very close to a blue ocean of them, and so the, there's no way that that cap on the clathrates is going to hold up. Now. There's been a big conspiracy. If you, you know, forget EcoHealth and Peter Daszak, uh, the, uh, there's a, the, in the climate science, in the Arctic science, there's, there is another Peter Daszak. She's called Carolyn Ripple, and she works for the USGS. She, she's in charge of the gas hydrates project and what the yeah, gas Yeah, I know. I've, I've, seen, I've seen her going around and showing the bubbling soils and lakes and what no, have you. Yeah, yeah, yeah but, but, but what, the program she's on is a disinformation campaign where, where, where the clathrate hypothesis is completely debunked based on one paper from her and a, an assessment of six papers done by Cage. Both of them are basically tasked with projects to mine hydrocarbons. So she's trying to find ways of mining these hydrocarbons. Her paper is pure junk. It's basically it's high school physics mistakes. She's a crap scientist. I mean, if you if you're looking for diversity higher, Carolyn Ripple is. Well, <laughs> is I, I, I have no doubt. I have no doubt. But yeah, as, like but, I say, so, so she's 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 pushing this propaganda for the 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 gas hydrates industry, for basically the energy companies that want to mine hydrates. So she's trying to say that these things are all stable. These things, uh, you know, there's nothing to worry about. These are below 100 meters, so all the methane will be dissolved. It's all horseshit. 
She said, oh, these me these seeps have been going on for millions of years. There's nothing to worry about. <laughs> but they so, have. Yeah. That's, they that's the thing. No, they no, 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 no. It's okay. The, where so, so you're, 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 you're trying to you're trying to you're trying to make an argument for geological process where I could point to you on at, at various points of just around the Pacific Rim where you have mass clath rates, okay, yeah. and and them and them uh, emerging from the oceans in in uh, in huge amounts, right? Yeah. And and, and, this, and they have this, they have. I mean, a good explanation for say the Bermuda Triangle is is yeah. the clath rates. Okay, and um, see, this, those 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 are not worrying. The ones in the east are so worrying. But are we talking about beliefs? There are we talking about science? <laughs> yeah, because this is this is the thing. I, there's no, no, there's nothing. Me, I'm listening. Like I'm trying to be the devil's advocate. There. Yeah, there's there's the science. The uh, uh, the science right now is I would say you have to use a form of empiricism and deductive reasoning, which says that uh, right now uh, everything that they've been arguing with respect to climate. And I would put everything in that. And right now, because of because the science has been has become so subverted as well, and you, you're watching it align, okay, in this in this idea of uh, climate and humans and disease and this one health paradigm. And like I say, I'm trust me, I used to I used to be a fervent fervent greenie, okay, when I was growing up. It was all because I was brainwashed into it, like all children are. Um, and have been for 50 years. And like I say, the, um, I've known about clath rates and all the, all these studies, etc., and how we were all, <laughs> I've heard all the doom stuff. Okay. And you know what, you know what I've come to, uh, you know what I've come to understand? And I can tell you this from personal experience. There are cliques within science. You just described a couple that are there, that are there um, grifting for grants all the time. Okay. And um, there's, there's very, there's very, very little science, I would say right now, that is able to, it's, it's come up against um, a, a boundary, a, a theoretical boundary condition, right, where it's based, a lot of it's based on um, limited modeling. Um, and that, that includes biology to physics to chemistry, to Geophysics, okay. So I would say you take inductive, uh, sorry, in, in, an empiric view and a, a deductive view, and show me where life stopped because of uh, mass release of clath rates. Clath rates are everywhere. In the, in, so a potential one is the KT boundary, but also the megafauna going extinct of the young dryas is a very clear example. Yeah, I don't think that's clath rates, right? That, that that's. I, uh, so so it's not okay so the science is very thin on on high rates and class rates uh so the the things to piece together are the fact that it's 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 not millions of years old that's bunk it's it, you can show that there's there's an island where in the 80s they actually did a detailed survey of uh bunker island i can't remember what it was called but funny they, it would be called bunk but that's uh, <laughs> yeah but anyway the that's i can't remember what that island is i'm not prepared to google it but anyway during the 80s they did a, a, a during the soviet times they did a u.s survey with soviet permission on around that that island and uh, a, aerial low level uh with a scoop and they, they found zero uh, methane emissions. There were no seeps. Now, in that very same area, they now found the uh, Samelitov on the, uh, has found on the Admiral Kaldish, the, the ship that they've just come back on. They found in that exact same area, 2,000 seeps. Now, Akara and Ripple in that are still spinning this line that all these seeps are old and stuff. And that, that's what uh, Shakova and Samelitov are up against is they slowly gathering the evidence they they remind me quite a lot like you because they, there's such this avalanche uh well can not an avalanche it's a wall of resistance to the idea that there is an emergency and and they slowly gathering evidence a to undermine this hypothesis that these are not new leaks and what they, the the leaks that they found last year are really dramatic and they the other hints that now the co2 uh, has spiked it spiked last year it alarmingly is enough just for non-alarmist 
mainstream scientists to say they're scared. So, so why, why? The, 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 I don't. The, this is this is the, the thing where of I, the I greenhouse would... gas potential in that. Meeting. Yeah, but the, this is this is. Um, no, it's instant and cal catastrophic. It, there, there yeah, be, but but show, the I can show you across geological history where we've had much more CO two, much more methane. Show me where life stopped. No, show me so, where so, life stopped. So the okay. In those uh, days that we had attacked ecosystems in a very low po human population, the the idea that you can grow grains at scale or run our civilization in after one of those events is is madness. It's it's just not possible. Yeah, because uh, one could never survive. Now, I mean, if you got, I mean, I'm 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 I, I would love you to be wrong. I would love us to be all wrong. I'd love the science oh, of, of oh, environment. Yeah, 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 I mean, honestly, and I've read. A, no, a, I would, I would just say this: Hugh, but, chill, right? No, let, but, let, let, know, let nature take its course, right? Let yeah, nature okay, take its course. I, I, yeah, yeah, but it's, it's, it's it, no. You see, okay, it's hard to chill because if if all of this is right, then you're far too sanguine. It, it basically, what I'm looking forward to is is something which I thought I'd never see, but a, a dramatic decline in our population. So 7.8 billion people are going to die all fucking horribly. And I believe that you and I are going to live long enough to see it. Um, and that was something I didn't yeah, I, that, I don't I don't think it would be down to uh, the earth ripping one off. I, I, I don't. <laughs> it's just, it's... Um, Listen, you it's, see, the problem is that we're talking about a science that is... The, the environmental science are a part of a everything is part of a complex system there so it's it's very difficult to have an exact uh, article that's going to just prove that this is everything is so interlinked whether the phytoplankton the the whales the ice the everything even the solar radiation everything is connected so it is absolutely so complex that it's impossible to have but we, we're back in the same thing as when we're talking about the vaccine and the virus and the and the complexities of of brainwashing people uh, interest vested interest we're in a we're in a very complex situation too when we come to the human body to the ecosystems of our body with viruses and in, so we have to be very careful where we tread there in terms of beliefs and in terms of of uh, yeah, so th 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 there's, a, there's, no, there's 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 differences there's, there's differences and, yeah. of scale here okay and, and, yeah but we we're, we're talking about the same thing we're in we we're, we're threading we have to be careful we have to go back to basic things first which is what we've been talking about how how do we prepare in the face of possible uh, civilization collapse, not necessarily due to climate only, but to all the things you've been talking about before. Yeah, and, and, and those, those immediate here. things, those yeah. immediate yeah. things should be on your mind. The, what's in the hands of God is just, pff, let it be, man. And the, it, it, it's if, if it's that, or it's a meteor, or f I don't know, it's a solar flare. I'd worry more about solar flares, to tell you the truth, than clathrates under the soil, okay? Um, if I had to think of a sort of existential danger. There's nothing, there's, look, dude, the sky is blue behind you. There's people walking around on their boats, okay? The, um, the sun keeps turning up and th the, the world keeps spinning. Okay, and stuff that stuff that's in the, the part this is of the, the argument for it's never happened before in history. So, so the the Kevin, the weather's changed. I'm not saying it hasn't. Ha I'm not saying it hasn't happened, but you have to you you have to be able to demonstrate um, a uh, a well, significant I impact. I'm, I'm kind of I kind of get insulted talking to ivory tower people because when because I'm a liverboard sailor, and the sailing community we are living it, we are living the climate change, and it's scary. It's basically the climate system has been de destabilized. There isn't a sailor who's who's uh, a liverboard that will will tell you. I mean, I can go this in the North Atlantic too. I mean, seriously. Like, I mean, I, I talk to fishermen, I talk to farmers, I talk to people who have been immersed in the, in the ocean since they were born, and people who are nearly a hundred year old. You know, people who listen to ancient the ancients, we call them here. Well, everybody's saying the same thing there. So we we can't. I know we're tiny. Our scale of vision is over less than a hundred years. So what do we see in the big, in the big <laughs> scheme and in the big cycle of things? I know, but we have tools now of measurements that we didn't have before, and we can measure the human impact. We can see the extinction of species. 
we can see the in extinction of insects, of birds, of mammals, of plants, of seaweed. I can see it on the shore here. I can I can see it. I grew up near the sea and I can see I can see the collapse of entire entire underwater ecosystems. Kelp so, forest and it's just so so, so Kevin, I'm, I, you live, you're talking to a person who's living the death of the ocean. So yeah. basically, in 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 so when get, I was to so get on land and leave the ocean alone. It's the, 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 the ocean. Wait, 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 hang on a minute. This is exactly the reason why I'm doing this work. Is because people on land are anthropocentric and they don't understand that the sea comes first. All life on Earth is dependent on what happens to the sea. We, you're living in upside down world. Every you, the sea is not an afterthought. The sea is the is the foundation I'm, of I'm life. Not, I'm not I'm not concerned about the sea. Right? I think yeah, the but, sea but this is why I'm so, this is why I'm hammering away at you because your world's upside down. You should first <laughs> be worried about the sea. So, so <laughs> I, 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 it, it, if you can depends. breathe with, if you can show me that you can breathe with without cyanobacteria, that's fine. Okay, so Japan Japan is probably uh, even more maritime than uh, the, the the UK and it, you know, fishes. Everything yeah, they're more exploitative. They uh, rape the sea and they still kill whales, of pretending that it's an experiment. <laughs> yeah, but the, you know, the you know what? Japan for the sea is is about as exploitative and. Uh, and but uh, you know what? It's still, it's still, it's still, it's still there. It's still. No, no, it and... isn't. Listen, <laughs> I, I, I just told you when I in the eighties when I used to go out on the sea off Nisner Head. As soon as we could get a hook in the water, we could pull out fish, tuna and red Romans and all these things. It was basically just how quick you could put it, put bait in the water was how quick you could pull out fish. Those seas are dead. Nobody goes out there. There are no ski boats going out there fishing because there's nothing to fish. The fish here, the basically the dolphin population has crashed. I talked to these dolphin guys who actually count the dolphins, but the dolphins in, in Greece, Basically, they they've essentially crashed now. I, I was doing enough to keep yeah, the top but, but, but again, again, this is this is this is this is the um, this is one of those things about uh, there's nothing you can do in this instance, right? So well, yes, no, there is, there is, and that's c c basically accelerationism. So there are two things you can so, you so, can prep people. You can prep people for what's coming. Because yeah, but one I, okay. of the things so, that concerns look, there, me there's, can there's be so difference. much worse because people don't know what's going. What's there's coming? A, there's a difference. There's a difference between overfishing and um, uh, fears about class rate ex explosions, right? No, over, no, over, no, over, no, Overfishing, no, no, no. overfishing. We can we can legislate away. We do it all the time. Um, oh, and, no, no. You can, okay, first of all, you can't because basically people need it for protein. That basically it's it's one of those resources that's becoming um, essential because basically people are running out of food sources but okay then take it back to the climate situation i just used the the, the seas dying as a basically a metaphor of how base you are so move to the land so the if you look at the pilot guides and you talk to the old timers here the old fishermen and stuff the the maltemi since ancient times has been known to blow in for about three days now the Maltemi, the last season, it blew for six months nonstop. It's getting so you can't sail in the Aegean anymore. The, people are genuinely alarmed. Basically, we had our first Medicaid two years ago. I was running from that thing. That's the very first Mediter Mediterranean hurricane. It's never been recorded in history. Okay, so um, people people throughout history. No, you have can't moved, laugh at this. Uh, it's, no, but it's, the, like, but there's it, something it, serious it, disconnect. It, it, we got to get to your psychology. <laughs> you're a scientist because, and you're sweeping you're, away the yeah, science and yeah, laughing. I think but you're, 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 but you're talking so about co cosmic sta scale events, right? And you're, you're wanting to, oh, you're I'm wanting to eco scale events, eco scale events. They're, they're 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 intrinsically linked, okay? And you, there is nothing. If the sea boats have raped the ocean, okay, and they've killed that bit of ecosystem, okay, they'll they'll go away, and eventually they fill back up. Right, that's that's what happens, no, right? No, and show no, show me no, where it no, does. No, 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 no. Kevin's right. Because it doesn't take long to regenerate if something no, is. No, it's, it's, it's it, not it, right it because concomitant. No, it, it, it doesn't work. It doesn't work like that at all. No, but but the it, your so, theory of accelerating means accelerating. So, a collapse means that you could you could prevent 
the total destruction of certain ecosystems so that they could regenerate. So, that's that's so, what I was. So, so if the fishing industry collapsed from economic collapse, yeah, that basically it's co-committance with a general financial and economic collapse. Yeah. It means that the industrial system collapsed. Yeah. It basically it it means that local people will fish that out. So the 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 what uh, basically you force you see with seven point eight billion people. You're talking about overshoot and then drawdown. You see, what you're saying is, oh, there's no drawdown as soon as no, I'm not saying that at all. When the I'm fish not stocks saying that collapse at and all. the fishing industry collapses, we're in drawdown. We're not in, okay. oh, then they get a reprieve. I, 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 I understand that there, I understand that there are there are there are multiple mechanisms that could come into play as the world reaches a point of uh, an inflection point as uh, new. Uh, new systems come into play, okay? But this, the the climate alarmism and the doomism about, um, it, it, I've been hearing it for all my life, okay? And... Um, so far. <laughs> yeah, but but you know what? They're still fishing. They're still, they're still producing stuff. No, and no, no. <laughs> something, something, something like 95% of the... What, what's Eric Derek Jensen's... But it's something like ninety-five percent of the fish stock are gone now. Okay, so th then they can't catch anything. It's not uh, economically viable to run the boats, so they'll stop. And then you know what? Life no, finds they, a way. They, they run. They run on subsidies. They they still they're basically running on fish farms. And yeah, the, but the in, in, in your in your subsidies. argument, yeah. So the, the, what are they doing? Fish farming. So they concentrate it the, and they're the bringing fish farming techno only works on 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 subsidies and it's actually ruining the ecology so the stuff I that they're putting you, in I've, I've been diving near fish farms you don't want to see the abnormal fish that are living I've, in there i've, 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 I've seen them but but and you know what like, when, no no probably when they're, when they're, they're chopped up and filleted up they probably still taste the same literally there, no, is, there is no no climate <laughs> alarmism that's gonna that's just gonna make me change anything that i'm gonna do with respect to my behavior i actually think my no, footprint's we're, pretty we're, small we're beyond that it's, i'm not trying to get any kind of oh, personal yeah, no, no. choice we're quite no, beyond no. personal choice i yeah, mean there's so, no there's no market solution or all this liberal crap that you know there's some way out of it, but life. Yeah, so but, but that's what I'm saying. It it just goes into the category of solar flare, of uh, um, pole no, flip. No, it doesn't because it's anthropogenic. No, I just I just I, I don't buy that. Right, I can't. You don't buy anthropogenic climate change. No, no. <laughs> no, that's, that's, I'm not How do you because 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 in, in your in your, uh, rise? in your in your example it was uh, the cloth rates are melting. Okay, no, it's, that is what the risk. And, is. And, and, you to, risk and you have to and you have to you have to prove that CO two is a problem. I've yet to, I've yet to see a convincing argument that CO two really is a problem. It's it, okay. Basically, the convincing argument is Arrhenius back in eighteen forty one. That, that's just that that's that's a that's a nonsense argument because you're looking at a glass bottle with some gas in it okay and trying no, you're to try at co2 concentrations which happen to match the upper atmosphere concentrations okay and i i i'm firm in the belief that uh it's nothing that the climate and the the ecology hasn't seen before as the maybe, earth's maybe gone it's through its change just fast you see you see the the ecosystem has has adapted but it was it was not anthropogenic so if, if it's endemic, then basically it's part of cycles and systems. What what we have done is destabilized it. So it can't keep up with the rate. The, the problem now is the rate. That's that's the big thing. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm, 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 not, I'm not. I'm not. So it's exponential. Number one and number two. Like great, you know, great. Year? That's your that's your accelerationism. Yeah. Brilliant. No, but <laughs> no, no. We basically, if you initially stop the engine of CO two, it's basically there's no way we can scrub the CO two out. Exactly. All these carbon capture schemes. Yeah, but I, I don't, I don't care about the CO two. I've yet to be convinced that it's it's the problem that everyone well, makes why, it out to be. Why did it go down last year? year? Why did it? Mm. Why did it sh completely go down during lockdown last year? In the, yeah, in the and did and, and did anything change? No, but I'm just over the period of four weeks, uh, where let's say eight weeks, where there was a real 
lockdown after that things started to come back as as a china woke up but how come the measurements went down so dramatically yeah, and, and, and so and that that tells you that tells you something right that tells you something yeah. that it's 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 a highly responsive system that um you, you stop for a few weeks boom and then it's it's resetting itself the carbon dioxide is being yeah. used up you can go out and you can change you can measure changes in carbon dioxide outside your front door if you've got the right meter and it'll go up and okay, down well, okay we're day. making progress here because you've just gone from it's a highly resilient system to it's a highly no system. no it's yeah. an adaptive system not fragile oh, well, you system. said responsive so yeah, yeah, it's an adaptive. adapt, but only so far. And that's why I say, is so, if, so, how long so does it, it take to, to, say, evolve new gills or something? That's very, very slow yeah, process. Okay, okay, so it's so, adaptive, but it's adaptive over a million years, not over 10. Okay, but you've just you've just given an example of um, we have a lockdown because of pandemic and suddenly all the levels drop. Although all that nightmare CO2 and all that pollution, wow, it just suddenly went away right so well, that, that's anthropogenic co2 that was not any yeah, other but, way but so but sh but show show me show me show me that that co2 is doing anything beyond feeding plants the, the problem is that it takes 10 years there's a 10 year lag on this <laughs> i've been listening to 10 year windows for decades right it's like i've got a few yeah, decades so wait another decades and you'll see the effect <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. I okay, don't think so. So, so you're living in 2010 or something? 2011? Uh, yeah, uh, look, look, uh, nothing's changed. Nothing's changed, right? But I'm, the I'm weather, living the, the change. I'm insulted okay. by this because uh, I'm living the change. Uh, okay, so you're in it. You're in a bit where the where the where the weather and the climate change. It happens all the time. In a bit. You mean like in the in the biosphere? I'm I'm a, like you know blue water sailor. Okay, so go some sail to somewhere where it's calmer right now. <laughs> <This is>, <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm here because this is where it's calm, and now I'm getting fucking hurricanes here. Okay, so, see, so, so, go, so, go, so go and... because the storms are getting really violent. They're getting. We had three hurricanes that were. It's getting to look a bit like Saturn, where you have these rows of um, of hurricanes. So, so well, well, that's very a lot of energy. You see, I. You see, I can go swimming in the summer, and I can tell you how bad the winter's going to be because we go swimming, and the, now the water's unseasonably warm. It's like fucking bath water, and then uh, it's not supposed to be. It's it's often five degrees over the normal temperature, and then so, when so, you so, so, what, but you're telling you're telling you're telling me you're, you're, you're telling me that a, a dynamic system that's moving through uh, an environment that changes cosmologically as well. Okay, is is changing on the ground in front of you? Okay, yeah. that happens all the time. Possible. That happens all no, the time. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. That's the of whole. Of course thing. it does. Of course it, it does. It look, look, look ten thousand like years ago, everything was it, it, there was a mile of ice hey guys, over I, North America. I feel I'm listening to two extremes there. I I feel like the extreme doomer on one side, and the other one is Kevin, who is kind of. The extreme optimist, and I, I think we need to come back on this because it's uh, with a bit, maybe a bit more rest and food, and you know, maybe stretching yeah, up maybe, and stuff like that. Right, yeah. Because I, I think we have a lot to explore there. It's interesting. Maybe we want to do a bit more homework, and and uh, because there's no need to to get passionate about this. We we, we need we still. I, I get passionate about it because Jesus Christ, man, I'm yeah, living I mean, this shit. I and then I, and then I hear this. Go, 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 like, go, oh, go, go, say, go to the, go to the Red Sea. Go I to the Red Sea. We'll go the somewhere else. That means that you're not facing Kevin. You're not facing facts. If you, if you think you're in the realm of psychology, no, but you, you're, trying, you're, trying to, you're trying to you're trying to convince me that the the climate changes. Okay, I agree with you. It changes. We've got records of that happening. You, what not, you have to demonstrate. Fast, what what you have to demonstrate. No, because you can go back. You can go back to the younger Dryas, and you can see way bigger changes. Okay way way bigger changes and that's that's in human memory okay yeah. so so how many, look, humans, how many uh, humans were then living then and, and how, how, many, how, how do you know what, what kind how, of how do you know how do you know how many humans we, we, were living we, there? we know from the from the genetic uh basically the genetic clock so there, there was a massive population bottleneck uh at the younger drives 
And so, so it's barely 2 million people uh, squeaked through. And uh, the genetic legacy uh, of a ca catastrophe round then in Europe is uh, almost... The, we, we, had a, we, had a, we had a volcanic explosion 70,000 years ago that left us down to a few thousand individuals. Why, yeah. why aren't you worried about a volcano then? I, they associate it. If, if, you, if you look at the rest of my stuff, it gets worse from there. And the, basically, the, the volcanic winter is really what's what what ultimately. So it's a cascade. What, what you see, you're confusing a number of things. One of them is resilience, stability. All of these things are confusing you. But if I, I you, know, system, you know what I say? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I come from a systems point of view, and the things that you you um, you're confusing dynamic stability and tipping points. So things can be dynamically stable into a certain range. There's a, a certain range where it tips over into a new regime. And clearly yeah. we're in that. We're, uh, okay. You know, you know, uh, that's nature. Things. That's nature. And that's man's job to adapt to it. Bring it on, I say. What comes to my mind when I'm listening to you talking about this is that we have, uh, we are talking about this, this climate thing as if, um, you have you have been exposed to it for many many years, and so have I. My father was was very um, aware of, of the environment and what was we were starting to do to. to and, and, and so so do the and science then, then give give me one so predictive no, 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 model, let, let me finish, one predictive me model that works. But let let me finish. But then, as as we evolved in our lives, did our thing. You in your area, I mean, it was always there. But it seems like you've come to a point there where you have found. Um, in that eco health thing and uh, a lot of things i agree with you a lot of scandalous thing but you don't throw the baby away with the water it's not well, because so it's where's the right. baby where's the baby no, well, in, the in the ecological is, research is, give me the baby in the it. ecological research you, no, you can't what I'm saying is that those yeah, you can like, a lot a lot of, of groups like that can have some truth in what they say but it's not necessarily associated with it's probably associated with a lot of lies and a lot of horrible people in them so you know you you see that in all sorts of, of political parties right. so, so, like, yes so show me show me people. show me out of the political scum show yeah. me show me the scientific models that have worked and uh, predicted so, so 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 we're not based on the models not, I, don't, I don't like the models either i think the models are bunk just like you do so so there's no argument there no. now if you want some evidence then okay show me the attack intact ecosystems and show me the extinctions so so you know just in terms of natural sure. form of domesticated I cows and which shows the amount of plastic that every human being hang on. carrying hang on. <laughs> hang on so it's just show me the attack ecosystems and, sh and tell me that basically the 45 and ranging up to 250 species that are going extinct every day is not scientific so um, they, they, even they, even they, look, look at the numbers. The, at the there numbers. were mass extinctions before, okay? There were no humans around to do that, okay? Why why are you why, why are you taking? Why, there, there, why, weren't, there wasn't an, the industrial revolution started in 1750, not for 40 billion years ago. But why uh, why is plastic? Why is is the amount of plastic in each human being? so high in the last 10 years why is sperm count co going down so much that it would probably be reduced to nearly nil in about 20 or 30 years if that's not anthropogenic this is never i mean i'm not who am i to say it's never happened in evolution a few minutes ago you know? a few minutes ago you're saying there's too many people and people are squeezing out yeah. too many no, babies so that. so which is it which I'm is it? There's too many people. There is a lot of people. It's a fact. It's a fact. But I'm talking about the 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 impact of our civilization on nature. Uh, we talk about plastic in mother's milk. We're talking about sperm count going down. If that's not something that worries you and that concerns well, you, and Sophie's Sophie, Sophie talking about impact. So impact. You're, you're making an argument that humans are not having an impact, and Sophie's no. I'm not saying they're not having an impact, right? But you have to sh you have to demonstrate that it's an it's an existential threat that the Earth can't uh, um, adapt to, recover from, and you've got to put it in the context of just natural it's, disaster. It's very easy. I'll point to you a paper called how um, basically you go to uh, complete extinction based on co-extinction. 
so basically we, we we are on the tipping point in most ecosystems from the amazon to the corals uh, most of the marine eco environments they they are food webs and they have basically symbiotic relationships with other uh, organisms in the web they they're all on the point where you can show that uh, from past ones or models they're all very robust that basically through co-extinction you get collapse in or very quick co collapse so so if you if you think they're still you know deer roaming around the serengeti i mean impala around Africa and there are elephants all over the world and we're still in some Eden and everything's adapted. You know, dead things can't adapt and we've killed everything all. So the idea that the planet can actually, yeah, I mean, you laugh. And I just told you the numbers for the sea and basically how the, the extinction of yeah. marine life. And we okay, but, but, but you, 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 you're telling me, okay, oh, there's, the, why do we recognize extinctions? Well, because we think we've seen them in the fossil record before, right? No, That's, because because we see the population decline and habitat yeah, decline. Yeah, but but but, but the fact that they've happened before, without industrialization, right, tells tells you that there can be another factor at play. You're just dealing with correlation. Okay, that's it. You you don't have a causal argument. So 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 you're taking up the argument that that all these things are not anthropogenic. So, so you're saying that no, the I'm saying, I'm saying, is not dying because of human activity. I'm, I'm you're saying, saying that the habitat destruction is not human. The for, the arboreal, say, say the tip over of uh, the CO, CO2 emissions, say in the Amazon, it's just tipped from being an absorber to emitter. You're saying that's not due to forestation? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm saying that you can have multiple effects running at, at the time and you could shut and, and down what's everything. What's, you what's, what's, you what's could... adapting? The polar bears? What, what are they becoming brown? So, so that, that's, that's, that's a... Um, hang on a minute. I've got to... Uh... Are, are fish taking to the land now because the seas are dead? Uh, yeah, but you keep saying the seas are dead, right? Um, yeah, they're, they, they, they're losing oxygen. They, they're absorbing CO2. The okay. temperature, the temperature is going up. I've been, and I've been hearing, I've been hearing that. If you want to show me the seas are dying, boy, I can, I can inundate you in an avalanche. I mean, if you like, like data, data, I'll give you a life yeah, yeah, But Look, when I, you have to show me that they can't recover, okay? And this is, this is the whole point, okay? That you live in an adaptive system. You just, you just talked about CO2. Okay, I'll show you they can't recover. I'll show you eco-restoration on the barrier reef. But those those recovery things have failed now. Uh, so the uh, I was reading the other day that the barrier reef uh, that was supposed to be dead is still it's still thriving and um, no it's that, not... that's some fringe guy who's who's some crackpot. They, basically, any anybody that's actually monitoring the situation will, will tell you that the, the marine species have, have switched. That the too many things like sea urchins uh, that are but it, the, the the polyps and the corals. What, what, one of the things that that quack is doing is he doesn't know the difference between living polyps and, and dead coral. So you can you can easily get a camera and if you don't know what a reef looks like, you can say, look at all these white things and say. So, no, but I've, I, I know I know what a living reef looks like, and I've I've looked. Yeah, well that's look, gone. Trust me, the trust me. Look, gone. You, you, for twenty years, right? And especially while I was at university, I was all into the climate. Um, hypothesis i bought into it big time okay and then as a scientist i had to accept that everything that they were predicting we were supposed to be ice free by now we were supposed to like, all the things that you're talking about were already supposed to have happened okay but you know what i see increasing ice okay um population still growing where's okay? this increasing ice uh, Antarctic, the no, ice no, you, is the same. I think we might be confusing extent with biomass. Yeah, I've, I, and this is another argument I've heard, right? So, uh, extent versus depth, and right? Um, yeah, the mass that, is that, completely different to the surface coverage. If you get a whole lot of splash, it spreads out, right? Yeah, but um, it's uh, it's mass, and you have to you have to say that that didn't happen before. We know Greenland was ice free uh, in the Viking era. Explain that to me. No, no, not ice free. I mean, it had the, they had. They were, they were growing. They were growing 
they were growing. They lived in um, horrific conditions. They had they could manage because they had the skill of Norwegian farmers to get to, to get by. But as soon as yeah, there, but, but, but there, was, there was there was there was less farm, there was less ice. Survive. Yeah, there, there was, was less ice. ice. It was a, a period of relative warmth. Yeah, it was a period of relative warmth. As soon as, soon as, as the cold cold. came back, they all were wiped out because the link with the mainland Norway was cut, and and they could never understand what happened. Some of them ran away to probably the United States now, and yeah. and most of them died, as some uh, archaeological uh, research have proven recently. Yeah, but uh, but look, so the thing is, you're in a you're in a situation where all the things you're talking about you can find in 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 geological records uh, all the time where humans didn't have this uh, what, the, the anthropogenic uh, acceleration to it, and maybe maybe there is. A component of it but you know what the co2 argument to me has never been has never been demonstrated to be causal okay and give me give me one paper which definitively proves that and and has been able to model it um out out over um any period of time it doesn't exist i know these i've i've no, watched I, the I literature co2 is part of the picture we talk about a complex system why, why concentrate on yeah, so so, so you talk so why, that's, why what, that's what you're trying to do that's what you're trying to do you you it first it was clath rates then it was co2 you're yeah, talking and, and, all, and so 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 i would say this when, when it, dealing with a complex system you pull out OK, and if you if if you're focusing so I could go into the brain and I can say, oh, I found this cell type yeah. and it it does this. And so the brain must be doing that all the time. Right. And it then I could make a calculation about the amount of energy that that cell is using. OK, mm -hmm. but it's impossible for me to sample all the brain all the yeah. time to yeah. make a to make a to make a, a conclusion out of it and to and to come out and just say oh i've seen oh there's there's methane melting or there's co2 well okay show me yeah. a time when that didn't happen before i know i agree i agree with you but this this the stance that you take is a little bit too uh dismissive if my if i make it it's, 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 it's a complex system what can we can't isolate elements but but why would we also say oh well because it's a complex system we're not going to take this seriously it would be fine yeah, but, no. okay so so what are you what are you going to do no but we're, we're going to first get prepared okay and, 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 and so and, you get prepared for, for, get prepared for the meteor strike or the volcano no because, um, a couple of things is a meteor strike is an entirely different animal firstly it's yeah. not anthropogenic and surviving it yeah. means that you have to be in the right place at the right time yeah, it's, 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 it's the same it's with the same with the planet. The same with the planet. You, if you, if you think that what you're talking about is is going to be like a global a, a, a blanket over the entire planet, then you fail to understand complexity no, and not, systems. Not going to be like that. We know that. No, no, we know that. that. And we have okay, to okay. So that's knowledge. what that's why I'm saying to you: find find the regions. So one one bit will go no. into chaos, and another bit will become stable. Okay, no. and if you want to, <laughs> no. no, I, I wouldn't say. Like uh, so you're on a burning aircraft and you say, well, just find, just find the, the cabin on the Titanic. But, but, that's, that's but, but, you're, but that's where your metaphor is wrong. No, right? but because... that's a selfish way of looking at things. Because if it, yeah. you admit, and you admitted to the anthropogenic uh, origin of a lot of extinctions and catastrophes, even if they're not, okay, you don't want to be in the doomers agenda, fair play to you, that's okay, I accept that. But because you admit to the anthropogenic origin of that, who is which who which, is which, anthrop people? which anthropogenic people extinction which which anthropogenic extinction well for example what what responsibility on this anthropogenic uh, uh, catastrophe that we're seeing have the indigenous people of the amazon or the people of the kalahari in africa they have absolutely no bearing on this industrial catastrophe that we're seeing. So is, wouldn't it be fair that those people be spared and all the other ones, which means ourselves, who are completely addicted and dependent on the industrial complex, just disappear? Um, well, <laughs> that's that's the shuffle of life and how the well, genes get through. It's just a question. It's just a question. Yeah, because but the, you, you're, just, you're just asking... Uh, the indigenous people who have caused nothing uh, I, I would say this, if it comes between me, my children and them, give me a belt fed machine gun and I'll take every one of them down without a second thought. That's what I would do. 
okay and yeah, I'd, then, 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 then there's nobody left right? i will be left <laughs> no, <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> after... how are you going to survive you're going to go i'll, you're I'll, go I'll, eat, I'll, I'll eat all the i'll eat all the people that i just gunned down right yeah if it comes to... so, so okay so so you have an interesting afternoon and then what I'll I'll keep going. The the the, the, <laughs> no, uh, the world will keep everything. turning. The everything. world will keep turning. The world will keep turning, <laughs> and the sun will come up, and the plants will grow. Okay. Yeah, and no, that's you're... that's there's there's where the the blockage is. Prove it. Prove it. Prove it. But, but hang on, we've we've proved it dozens of times, and each time <laughs> you've just missed it. How? How? Well, we've just shown you that there's basically a six-mass extinction. You haven't you shown me anything. You, well, you, don't me anything. You, you don't believe there's temperature rise. You don't believe the greenhouse gas rise, even if there's no correlation. Basically, I mean, even no causation, there's correlation. You, you think okay. that the correlation. ecosystems are intact and there are in enough people to actually feed if we have... Uh, if I, 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 think, I, think, I think that those ecosystems, like I say, because you don't understand the, com the full complexity of it. You're taking... No you're one take, does. You're, you're, I don't. Uh, uh, okay. No oh, right, right. So now, now you've picked up on the, on the critical fact. No one does, okay? So to go around making the types of predictions that you are when you don't understand understand fully the system okay it's a facile it's a facile way of trying to organize yourself no imagine it this way let's use this analogy okay i give you a, a, a suspension bridge it's too complex or the whole dynamic is too complex to say exactly how it'll twist and turn and all the failure modes and you're saying so therefore you have to throw up your hands and it's infantile to even worry about it horseshit you're loading straw onto this bridge you know that there's a last yeah, straw that's going to break but, the bridge. But, but, but you're talking about a you bridge. You might not know the you, details. Hang on. You might not you, let. I noticed that you don't like people to finish. I think there's a blockage. Well, but when but I when I when I hear minute, nonsense, let me finish. Okay. when I hear so nonsense, you've got, you've got a bridge, and you know that basically it can only take so much. So you know one failure mode, and that you just keep on loading it up till it breaks. So you're right. You don't know the detailed system, but you know how you can fuck it up. And so basically, okay. it's a personal argument what you make. But but you, you've you've just you've just made uh, the the logical error of trying to compare uh, uh, an apple to an orange, right? Because the bridge is not a planet. You don't understand the the the, the integration no, it's a of system. these systems. I'm using it as an analogy for a complex uh, yeah, but, system but, that's too complex but, to but, understand. But, I'll give you dozens and uh, dozens but, if you don't but like. But a bridge, a bridge, a bridge is child's play with respect to the type exactly. of system. So, so more so with what I'm saying. So, 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 in that, so in that case, your your ability to predict in that complex system becomes ever weaker. No. Right. This is an this is an axiom. This is an axiom of systems. This is an axiom of systems uh, or network science. No. Okay. No. It, it is. No. Look, I, I spent no. I've spent my whole life looking at the brain. Right. And I've done the most. I've spent my, my whole modeling. life I've working done, with dynamical systems and complex. Right. And so and so. so okay. You, so you're, using, me, me, you're using you're using reduced you. symptoms. Let me, you, let me you, inform you, you in the most basic way possible. Is a camel a more complex system than a bridge? Yes. Okay, so keep loading ca a straw on a camel's back, and at some stage you get to the last straw. Now you okay, saying, no, try, you try, can't say that try, because you don't understand a camel. Yes, I well, do. Try, try, <laughs> try, try to keep the try to keep the camel from letting you put straw on its back. Right? This is okay, these are these are. Me, go, you have to. You've well, that's, that's the where analogy we come further than I can go. That's where we come into activism. Yes, that's true. So that's where try to stop the people overloading straw yeah, on the camel, yeah. and that's where we talk yes. about monkey wrenching actions. That's where we talk it's, about destroying. You, you, the you know and what's going to happen if they keep on loading straw on the and, camel? And, and yeah, and the industry. Yeah, but it's but it's but it's yeah. it's it's yeah. the same. It's 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 if you if you step out if you want to if you want to get good <laughs> at systems science okay you mm -hmm. step out and you look scientist, by the way, uh, so okay <laughs> okay so uh you should understand that at each time you're dealing you, you'll get to a point where you you expand out a dimension and you're looking down and you'll see what looks like stability chaos meta stability okay yeah. and all, all you're seeing is you're seeing the manifold Okay, and the boundary condition will change and it will go into another dynamic. And on that on that premise, okay, 
your way of looking at your black pill um climate doom okay is is a, as valid as me saying that uh the moon's going to fall out of its orbit and crash into the planet okay, okay? so let me speak here so okay let, so you step into my domain and now step into yours that's my it's it's my you. domain it's okay, my domain you're, you're, let, let me say your domain's medicine and then i'll give you a, an example from medicine and that's my domain too. You have made, and, and so if you sue. So you're saying that basically, if I have an alcoholic, an alcoholic is a, basically a very, very complex system. The human body is very, very complex. So I can't make any prediction, a black pill prediction about how this addiction is going to go down unless they stop drinking. I'm saying like, uh, you know what's going to happen to the alcoholic if they ca carry on drinking? It's basically... Yeah, but, you, but you're, looking, you're, looking, you're looking at a small, a, a small part of a network where, you've, where you can constrain that, the, the boundaries of it. And you've already admitted that you can't see and measure all aspects of what's going on on the planet. And yeah, every but, but I, and I can see, and I can I can I can see the you, alcoholic going down with alcohol. And so I, I, I can give you uh, I, I can I can give you uh, okay, so I'll give you an example of this. There are many alcoholics who hit rock bottom and recover. Okay. There are many alcoholics that are functional and can work the whole the whole of their lives. Okay. So mm -hmm. you know, even even your example, okay, once you once you start drilling down into it, you find ever more inherent complexity and it yeah. seems to go okay. on. And okay. some so, will so, die. Okay, so, and so some we're, will we're, die. we're making a tremendous progress here. So yeah. let's take the alcoholic that reaches rock bottom and recovers. If they reach the rock bottom soon, is it better for them? to reach it sooner or wait until they have sclerosis of the liver, a much more advanced condition, which they'll get to if they carry on drinking at a hey, constant but, rate. But again, what, what you're trying to do is you're trying you, you, the, the metaphor for uh, the body versus uh, multiple and integrated ecosystems that operate from the, literally the micro, from the atomic level to the cosmic level. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you're, you're in a, paradigm where you're looking at selective data points and i would say um being pulled by a confirmation bias since when okay. is the body completely separated from the cosmos the body the human i'm not saying i'm not saying, I'm not saying it isn't but if i look if i if i look down the microscope the body is the universe yeah but if i look yeah but okay i i get all the spiritual nonsense right but if i look down a microscope okay and i'm and i'm looking at bacteria you're a christian what do you mean? Um, no, I, look, oh you have to, you have to, you have to understand the human, that the human is you, infinite. The human okay. is part of the cosmos. Like you okay. can't separate, you can't separate. Uh, I mean, things in a complex system. Everything is interconnected. Yeah, but I can take bacteria well, out of out of a uh, environment. I can go, I can go down and to the rice paddy fields, pull some stuff out, bring it to my house put it under a microscope watch what happens it's going to decay and die because i've put it out of its system the rice paddy field's going to be fine okay and just because no, i take you, one you, human you, if i take you, one you, human you, and i you, turn you, him into an alcoholic and so no, this you is where, already this is, gave up what that you position know? with your analogy on the bridge you just said you cannot no, but you, 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 be at the level now that you're arguing that you no can. but you keep trying so you, you keep reverse, trying reverse the position no you I keep mean, trying you to say you can't basically you can't atomize a complex system. You, you, you use this example. You, you can. You just use this example. A bridge, a bridge being chaotic, okay, is equivalent to the earth having going through some sort of environmental change. And I said that's that's an, a, a, an insane metaphor. To no, make. I'm talking about its failure mode. We're talking about uh, yeah, the, 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 the failure modes of failing. a bridge are not the same are not the same as complex ecosystems. Okay. No, but I use that as an example to say if you pursue but it doesn't, a certain it doesn't matter. I, 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 I can, I can, I can a certain metric like weight, you will defeat the system even if you don't understand it. You know enough <laughs> to know that you can only load a bridge so far. Yeah, but look, so every, every, every system, every system. You know you can only load the environment so far before it collapses. You don't <laughs> have to understand it yeah, in any you, great detail. Okay, so um, you oh, have no, no. to you have to first demonstrate, okay, that you are, you are at that boundary limit with the planet, and I don't think you can. 
okay because in the context of what we understand with geological history the the archaeological record there's nothing that's happening now that hasn't happened before and all that happened before happened without man okay or without no, or, or no, presumably... strongly that that it, it's it's never happened this quick and, and certainly, in, certainly in our life, in, in the, oh, the just, lifetime just of fix, our just fixate, just, just fixate on the younger dryas, right? Because that's in human memory, okay? And you, yeah, you have, that, you have thousands of years, right? No, that's where no, two hundred and fifty years old. No, no, there are glacial melts that happened in days that that scoured North America, okay? Uh, well, so so basically, the. Um, uh, what's the name of sheet? The Landris sheet, whatever the, the the ice cap on the, the thing. Mm. But it it had a few. Uh, it had a huge outflowing of water um, that basically is evidence in in the badlands and stuff. So mm. the so the La Landris sheet. Wow, well, what the hell's it called? But any the the anyway that that sheet pulled a lot of water and that water drained out and uh, but. The, the the ice melts and stuff is yeah another theory which I'll give you an answer for but not now. Yeah, but 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 look, look this is this is this is the point though right that happened literally in days to weeks right the the, yeah. the consequences of it okay we're still here okay yeah, because 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 basically okay uh, we had let's just say that we took a ninety percent hit on the human population then. And then at that at that stage they had an, an intact ecosystem. So if you if you take say big parts of the ecosystem down, so so you, you've gone round into a circular argument, right? So if we if we could, we can agree that there are cataclysms that can happen, and I would say yeah, we've agreed yeah. that they can that things can change like yeah, that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. it doesn't it doesn't change your planning beyond prepping, right? Because no, it, because it, it because then it just comes it comes down to the luck of where you are when that when oh, that uh, worry, change in the Kevin, system. Kevin, the indigenous people don't need to prep because they can survive without electricity. Yeah, power. okay, fine, and they they probably they and when that they when that change them. comes, they don't need all that. And yeah, even the, they're, they're, they're fine. They're fine. Maybe, but, but prepping, maybe prepping. I agree, but but not only prepping. I mean, there's psychological prepping. There's physical prepping. Yeah, and yeah, the other yeah. thing is that yeah. you can stop the. Basically, this engine is still running, so you, so you can hamstring the engine. I don't think the engine makes any difference. Yeah, but there's a point make of any difference. Is, is is like you don't think keeping the fishing uh, fleets at home would would make the the fish recover, and you don't think the fish recover? They, prob they probably will, but again, but again, again, it will just it will just come down to economies because eventually, if they're just sending fish uh, the boats out and they don't come back with anything, then th they'll stay home anyway. No, right? it's, no, it means that it's, 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 no, it means that local you're, you're trying to, you're trying to get into an argument about minutia with respect to ca catastrophism, okay? And I agree with you what? on catastrophism. You're, you're trying to get yeah. into an argument yeah. about minutia when you when you're trying to put it in the context of catastrophism, okay? Okay. Yeah. And so, so we both agree on the catastrophe. Yeah. Okay, but but but, 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 but but now but now you're ruminating, inevitable? you're ruminating about about small details. Okay, okay. But where does where does your catastrophe come from? Then? So you believe it could come from it could come from anywhere. I don't think it's going to be class rates. You know, you know what I th it, it, I think if there's a bigger chance of anything, you've already we've already seen it. It was the Carrington event. That wasn't mm -hmm. that wasn't so long ago, right? And the only reason we knew about it was because we'd begun to electrify. Right. And wait, wait, the, wait, wait, refresh my mind, the Carrington event? The, the Carrington event. So basically it just fried North America's electrical system. Oh, the solar flare. Yeah. Oh, right. but 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 <laughs> Yeah. Okay. So um I if if you want if you want uh, if you had a scale of all these things of probability, okay, I would put that at the top. But, but so yeah. you think there's an imminent catastrophe, and you think it's a solar flare? No, I don't. I, I don't. To me, it doesn't matter what it is. Okay, and it's it's where not. Where are you it, coming from? A biblical position? You think that the apocalypse is coming? No, it. I I just come from. Uh, this it's just military training. I'm prepared to fight what comes over the horizon. It doesn't matter what it is. I'll engage but, but, it. But but. 
you're fighting what we're causing. You're fight, you're fighting your own shadow. No, I'm not. I'm I'm sitting here. I'm able to talk and build a community. Um, and when when the time comes, it comes. Okay, and it's the it's it doesn't look. Um, you're you're afforded the luxury of ruminating about the details of your um, existential angst. Where if you were in Gaza, that's a good example because that's kicking off right now. Okay, you're not going to be worried about class rates. You're going to be worried about artillery shells and drone strikes. Okay, mm. and yeah, I'm literally, with you. I'm totally with you. Yeah, and and so right now, all you're doing is your t you're taking a your brain is taking up a psychological position because one you're adapted for that that's what your brain does it's looking for danger because you, you've evolved to respond to it that's very interesting right and you that's very interesting right that's the first time i hear this that's i'd like it. i mean <laughs> like, like i like to hear what hugh is going to respond <laughs> hugh's not going to respond very surprising <laughs> You're looking for danger. You're but you are. You are. No, no, right? we don't disagree. I don't mean the reptilian, reptilian right. and, so, and so and it's so you've hooked you've hooked on to in your case, you've hooked on to environmental catastrophism. Other people, you can see the same psychological phenotype, but they hook on to different things. Whether it's yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, it's, Jews, it's, it's, whether it's, it's aliens, whether it's uh <laughs> pedo groups it doesn't matter that yeah, it becomes their focus. anxiety yeah. 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 yeah and that's yeah. Uh, literally that's all but you're that's dealing very with. interesting i think yeah we but this is what we've been saying this is, you, this is preaching to the choir but it's now go on changing because things like that come out and we're going much deeper into human behavior and also the brain and i think i would really like if the next time we talk together i think we should, that we continue to talk about this aspect of the brain that you've brought up kevin mm. because that's at the back of a lot of things and we have to be sincere with ourselves we could even mm. talk to you you could talk to us about your uh your five layered brain um <laughs> kevin's uh, not gonna like that you know? no but why not it's, it's uh, yeah why not we can try why not you know yeah um, thank you so uh, much i'm really gonna have to go yeah. and walk because i'm yeah, getting no, let's let's end it there but but thanks kevin i I'm amazed how much um, we're in violent agreement. <laughs> I don't think you're realizing how much agreement we are. Yeah. yeah in, in a lot of ways, I feel like I'm just trying to, like, you know, round off some rough edges on you. <laughs> I don't yeah, think I've got as many rough edges as you do. Um, no, because you're just looking. I have different. Um, priorities and uh but the the no, the, but you the, mean, the direction the, the direction like is the same kids we're coming from the same place yeah the, the, the direction is the same right and what you, what you're playing out is is the 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 programming of your genes and your and of course you know there's environmental consequences that have played into that your your own life but it's a common theme that you say it's even in it's even in the religious texts right that's why you've got this premise of armageddon because we face these existential crises all the time whether spiritually or physically okay it's it's the same thing and your brain is wired all the time to be about how am i going to accept that what do i do and also, when may i add also how will i do how what is it to do the right thing well that yeah. is you, that is also i think very at the center yeah, do, do 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 unto do others as you would do unto self okay but look yeah. i i'm i'm looking Fall at each of the machine gun is what you said <laughs> look if you you just said to me what what, what would you do no, no, if you I were, don't, don't respond i'm just no 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 we're not going back <laughs> <I'm just judging. laughs> I, I, i'll explain it another time because i don't think you exactly got what i was saying but it's okay don't worry but but don't kevin worry. we are we are actually in violent agreement on on yeah. so much yeah and, thank uh, you so much guys yeah. we really have to go now yeah well okay. well thank you kevin that's very it's very nice to talk to you i do feel a sense of camaraderie have a lovely weekend. maybe you and feel the, and the, thank you for the link you sent i'm going to look into uh that uh, botkinson and uh, the other names that you've dropped uh yeah and if, if you want an existential threat the bio warfare started okay yeah, worry yeah, about right. that i agree <laughs> but yeah <laughs> Uh, yeah. my, my back of the envelope uh, calculation would be 100 million dead 
before it becomes really endemic in background? Um, well, we'll see. There's, there's, <laughs> look, um, now we've forced the issue of it being a lab. Um, <laughs> that takes us into a whole new direction. And suddenly someone's responsible. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's not nature anymore. As they tried to pull, as they tried to pull over your it's eyes. Anthropogenic. You you <laughs> so close. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And in that case, in that case, there that you changes have changes everything. You know. It yeah, does. <laughs> yeah. But that, that's that here. We have something that's causal. We can pinpoint yeah. your anth your yeah, anthropogenic causality okay. is nebulous it doesn't you can't pick it up I, anyway no but you see most people agree that with with our point of view that it's anthropogenic so the mainstream agrees that it's anthropogenic climate yeah work. i just i just i just think that's part of uh the program for social control right yeah i can remember no, there, them there bringing... is a program for social control but it doesn't negate the fact that the the climate change is happening climate instability yeah climate climate change all happens all the time I'm, I'm not. I'm not stressed. In, in, about. Stability doesn't. But anyway, we'll, we'll continue. <laughs> Boys. Okay. Goodbye. All right. All thank right. you very much, guys. Bye, everybody. Talk to you bye soon. Bye. Bye.